in three folders. Hey, gang. Uh, we're waiting for Brian to join, so the show will start a little bit late. But I was just telling uh, Paul uh, about this this story about Brian Colon, you know, when he was on the show. And he was so excited to do the show. And he's like, I'm happy. To, I'm gonna, This is going to be really great tonight. And then we get on the show, and he and he's not there. And I'm freaking out. And, and about midway through the show, uh, I get a phone call from Brian, and he has overslept. <laughs> we just we just saw Brian over the weekend. He was at um, the Houston Arcade Expo. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah. Houston, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in Houston. They, he was going to check it out. He was supposed to check back and see if uh, they're interested in uh, dragging my ass down there too. Oh, so absolutely. that'd be fun. I know, Keith, I know oh. Keith, the showrunner. I'll force him to do it for you. I really want to be awesome. Okay, good. Yeah, you're gonna come. I really want to go to that show, and I would really wanted to go to Free Play Florida this weekend, but uh, that's not happening. So, yeah. Hey, uh, check this out. Uh, let me see if I can adjust. I'm gonna adjust my video. You see my uh, my arcade one up in the background. I put a new marquee on it. You see it? They have marquees. New uh, game. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can it. Here we go. <laughs> I literally taped the marquee to the top of it. That's how that's how classy oh. my mod is. <laughs> right. Anyway. Well, what kind of tape? Really? Well, that, that, uh, they're three three M poster <laughs> sticks. Poster. Okay, that's classy. Yeah. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, nice, they're nice. I got that marquee at the uh, arcade swap here in town a few weeks ago. You know, <laughs> Grin Wing Twenty. It looks much better in you person. Know, you know, you're laughing about that. that. That's pretty much how we did our uh, concept games. Just taped we, them onto the. Just throw some. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually, uh, we'll talk about it. In the, in the show. I, I, I got some. Uh, some uh, concept stuff. That's that's what I really did at Valley. A lot of was uh, any any game. Uh oh, we just had him cut out. Shape. There we go. I got. I got. Stuck. We might need you to reboot your router. <laughs> it's uh, you're, you're you're you cut completely out there for a minute. Do you know how to do that, Paul? Well, I did. Oh, I know. Your router, you just go over there and you unplug it and you plug yeah. it back in and boom, you're on. But hey, uh, that that's how we roll. We're gonna uh-huh. just we're gonna roll with it. If you if you end up being choppy, we'll just roll with it. Yeah, you know. Okay. I mean, I, 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 turn the, I, I turn the power off at the junction box at my house. That's how I make it reroute. Now here's the funny thing, Mark. You're crystal clear right now. It's amazing yeah. how good your video is. I'm sure it's because there's laws about people using their phones on the highway. And- <laughs> <laughs> so nobody's on their phone. But my phone is like buried down. In the- <laughs> oh, my gosh. Let me see who's in the chat. You found the, 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 the golden pocket, man. <laughs> I want to welcome Demerge. Uh, Demerge 28, uh, Greenwing 20, Ice Cold Joe 42. Hey, wait a minute. Ice Cold Joe. Uh, is he like the, the world record holder? I don't know. Uh, that's a good name. I like that name. Uh, Major X Havoc. Mike Page is in the house. Mr. Peabody. Yeah. Welcome to the show. And voices Fine Young Cannibals 2021, as I like to say. And Whiskey Flipper is in the house. I love this. I love it. So, you know. We got a, we got a, a good start to the chat. Now, we, we normally, uh, you know, kick. We, we, we just kick around stuff. And we, we're just. Uh, is it? I bet you Brian right now is trying to figure out how to make his mic work with his laptop on hotel Wi-Fi. So this ought to be good. So, well, and in the mean, I know. Well, gonna it, be we're gonna have we're gonna have uh, Paul is going to do Brian all of Brian's stuff. He's gonna do gadgets tonight. I think that'll all be right. good. Uh, Put him to work. Yeah, we, 
You're going to get the same pay rate that I get. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's very fulfilling. Uh, uh, Voices FYC is a I'm friend of my router. Okay, sounds good. This ought to be good. Yeah. He's going to be like, Ch-chunk, and he'll plug it back in and it'll never work. And we just won't have him on the show. It'll be right. fantastic. I'm trying to see what that poster is in the background. What is it? Oh, it's Mortal Kombat? Yep, yep. It's a, it's a poster of him. So I had an idea, Mark. Why don't we make posters of ourselves? Uh, and put we'll, them behind us. Yeah, put them behind us. I think that's brilliant. Uh, I have a I have like a fake ID a friend of mine made, but it's like five feet long. Yeah. And I'm wear and I'm in like a prom like costume. I guess they're not costumes. I mean a tux. Uh, I'm gonna I'll 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 dig that up. Maybe that'll be the next show. I don't know. You know but not here at the bar, so You know what else I'm I'm tired of Brian's lies. What? Like he said he was on his way up to his condo. He's freaking lying. Oh, there's there's He's... no way to know whether that's true or not. But yep, yep. He's lying. Maybe he's yeah, Sam says maybe he's pooping, you know. So. <laughs> he says trying to get back to my room. What is he drunk? Like I don't know maybe, where my room is. Maybe it's dark where he's at. I bet. It's dark here already, uh, and it's five twenty. Yeah, he's well, drunk. it's been dark here for two hours. Oh, you know. Man. So, you know, whatever. It's yeah, sent hey, there's Brian. Hey, we were just hey, Brian. we were just thinking you were probably what? drunk. What? Couldn't find I, your way I back. Mean, no, <laughs> but, but there is beer. <laughs> is, is it ice cold? Is it ice it cold? It is ice cold, <laughs> and, and it's above board and fully licensed. <laughs> it is, and you know we've talked about changing the song to be "In Heaven There Is No Beer." <laughs> oh, that'd be interesting. Why? Because you have to license Amazing. the song. We would have to do that, but I mean, we could just record it at Gastov's. Right, uh, that would be fun. Why not have a bunch of different songs with accordion. Oh just, God, I not. just want to. I, I miss to say ziggy zaggy ziggy zaggy oi oi oi. <laughs> <laughs> I I really miss uh, the Gastov Zergumichlikite uh, because uh, first of all, uh, when you get the hiccups, they have a cure. Do you ever had, have you ever gotten the hiccups when you're at the German bar? It's the best. Oh, no. Uh, bitters and a lemon. It's a shot of bitters and a lemon makes hiccups go away. I'm not even I kidding you. I, because you puke? No, it's it. If if you, it's like the one part of a mojito I don't want. Uh, bitters is a little bottle of uh, like. I don't know. How could you not know what a bitters is? Anyway, I don't drink. I, just don't, I don't drink mojitos. I though. don't know why you'd put bitters in a mojito. It's in the ingredient list. I don't know why. It's I I think you're in the ingredient list. I'm not sure. All right, when Paul gets back, we're going to start the show. When Paul gets okay, yeah. okay. and then we'll t- you can do what you're working on first, Mark, because you're driving. Right. Well, I, I don't have my. I can't bring my show notes up, so I'll try to remember what it is. But this is hilarious. I'm not, work- I'm not working on anything. Shut the front door. I, you are too. I actually can't believe you're even here right now. All either of you, like this is a miracle. It's a Christmas miracle. No, it's Wait, not. It's, it's not even Thanksgiving it's a, yet. It's a holiday season miracle. Right. Oh my gosh, this show is so uh, peace PC. I can't even <laughs> stand it. Oh, you know what? We should probably hit a couple of social media sites. Brian, would you hit hit up a couple sites and see if you can drag some more chatters I'm in? I'm still here? trying to get my I'm still trying to get my my Google account up here so I can actually see what the fucking show notes uh, are. Like this is <laughs> the part of the show that's going to end up on the back end. Okay, all the chatters that are there, do me a favor. Go to your Facebook. Tell people yeah, to join us. Twitch? Yeah, go are to we Twitch. On? We're we're live, man. We're live. We're live. Oh. Arcade Radio dot live, dude. It's freaking seven twenty five. We should be doing the intro to the show right now. I introed a while ago today. <laughs> we did drink I need another plane, beer, but it wore off my wife. We need some more. So. Yeah. Hey Sam. And it makes me 
when I'm vomit. No. <laughs> this, this, the, the stop and go is going to make your vomit. So this, that would be good I, time to play the credits. Mm. So I am going to say, like, you guys, we have to come to APA. This is, like, freaking oh. unreal. I would love to this come show, to APA. By far the best show I've ever been to. It, it is so much fun. Like, I mean, it's just, it, I mean, it's like amusement rides, like literally roller coasters inside, right? Wow. You have axe throwing inside. You have arcade games. You have pinball. You have like free food because you need to buy this for your carnival or whatever. I mean, it's just, we need oh. to do this. Okay, done. What is it? Mark, uh, Necros would like to know what the hell you're doing in California. Uh, we're going to do two days of Disney, uh, you know, California Adventure one day, Disneyland the next. And then we're going to fly to Minneapolis and hang out with Sam's fam. Well, uh, so, please... what are we like chop liver here? No, I mean, you know, we were like, hey, let's let's bookend it with some Disney and then we'll go to, you know. There's no Disney yeah, in don't... Minneapolis, so I, th- I have to come here for that. You, know? you don't visit <laughs> us? Oh, we're, like, we're going to be there Sunday for a week. Like, you, where I'm not Sam's family. That doesn't matter. I'm going to hang out. I'm going to go. All right. uh, I'm going to go hang out at, at Brian's house and you know play with his uh, the gun. Well, I'll play, play. play. Yeah, I, uh, You're going to play, play with my gun. Play with his yeah. what? Play with his what? Hey, we lost Paul. What happened to Paul? That could take up to five Wait, minutes. Are we for mature audiences only? We are. Yeah, oh, shoot. Yeah. We're for mature audiences. The first show. You know, yeah. Oh, by the you way, know, think- uh, 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 Mark, every single one of the clips tonight is going to get us flagged on YouTube. Even the, 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 the uh, yeah, well. So I don't, e- I don't even know what to do. So I'll, I'll play them tonight. Uh, for yeah, what's in the juke? We'll we'll do something to the video, I guess, before it gets sent up to YouTube or something. Yeah, I I don't know what to do. You know, the the thing about YouTube is that the the editor that they have sucks, so you can't like blank out the songs, even though right. they they tell you you can. It does it doesn't were work able, that way. Were you able to get any of my stuff? No, not not a single thing. That's neat. All right, I'm gonna like start getting ready so I can tee it up in the chat because do you guys have to see the Ferris wheel water slide. This thing was unbelievable. That was cool. But you know what, uh Brian, I think what is more important is the is the IAPA booth that you were there for. And and I would love to show that. Um, it is. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull that up. I'll get it re- I'll get it teed up so I can put it in the chat. I'm working on a laptop tonight. Now so I, I can I can play the audio but I cannot play. No, I'll, I'll post. I'll post it, and I'll, I'll let the chatters watch it, and then I'll I'll throw it up. We'll, we'll take care of it. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm I'm gonna check to see if Paul's even on the Skype call anymore. I think he might have dropped. Is he he's not even there anymore. All right. I I can't wait to talk about some of this stuff. This let's, is like let's get this awesome. guy. He's probably freaking out. He's like, I Adam told me to unplug shit, and now it doesn't work. <laughs> Dang it. I gotta sign in here next. Ah. Let's see All here. Right. How do I add? Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna add. Oh, I can add Ed Log. I can add all the best. Oh my god! Oh my god! I can I'm ask. Stolen. Wait, wait. I meant. Uh, let's just start adding people to the chat. <laughs> I met Ken Ken Fidesna tonight. <laughs> let's see. Let's see if we can this I, work. Gary Stern stopped by the booth. Oh, oh my God. Check uh, out his cold beer. Oh, there he is. Oh, good. We didn't, we didn't lose you. Uh, <laughs> all right. We're about to kick this thing off. So, uh, everybody, if everybody ready, the show's going to start right now. All right. Let's do it. Live from KOYR Studios in Minneapolis, Minnesota, this is Arcade Radio. Beware, I live. Run, run, run.
Oh, that means it's time for season six, episode two of the Arcade Radio podcast. Well, actually, we should just talk this about this. Is we had a soft opening last time. This is really this is really the first episode, right? Today is Thursday, November eighteenth, twenty twenty one, and the time is now approximately seven twenty five p.m. Central. I'm your host, Mister Adam Anderson. I'm joined by my co-host, Mark. Life moves pretty fast, Shields. And last, but, oh, and least, the Paradise Arcade Shop proprietor and Jimmy Fallon backup host, Brian Thurston Howell, Armitage the Third, and joining us tonight with over 30 years of commercial illustration and design experience. He's won numerous awards and accolades, kicking off his career at Ballet Midway in 1982. He's worked on arcade artwork for your favorite games, and even beyond that, designing escape rooms and haunted houses. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm round of applause, please, for Mr. Paul E. Niemeyer. <laughs> I just have to say, uh, Mark writes all the intros, and I read them on the fly. So <laughs> I have no idea what they're going to say. Uh, it's pretty fun. Okay. Uh, it's, it's quite amusing when he doesn't expect something. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, there is that. Uh, Mark, why don't you tell us what you've been working on? Okay, so let's see. Uh, while I was at Arcade Expo, I brought a Satan's Hollow and a Space Zap. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, got to hang out with uh, um, a few folks out there. Uh, Flash Gordon actually was there. The oh. actor, Sam Jones. Yeah, cool. That was good. You know, you have to, like, you know, acknowledge the Flash when he's there. Um, There's then, a documentary uh, on that whole thing, right? Isn't there? I know. I, I saw he had, like, a poster that he would sign. I got two things signed. I got I bought one for Sam. It says, from Sam to Sam. Oh, and fun. Then, um, and then I got one as well. And then uh, from a buddy that's in Louisiana, I bought an Atari 720. Nice. So, yeah. I mean, but I'm on vacation now. So, uh, you know, we'll we'll get a good look at it next week when we come back and stuff. Very cool. I like it. Uh, Brian, what you been working on? (laughs) Well, ice cold beer. And that's basically, I mean, I, I've been doing some of the things. I actually picked up a uh, repaired ripoff from Ty, but the last week of my life has been a lot of ice cold beer. Wow. And so I'm, I'm down in Iapa now. We'll talk some more about that. But uh, it's uh, it's been fun. It's been exciting. It's been disappointing. It's been exhilarating and everything in between. And it's been a wild ride. I wouldn't trade it for anything. That's good. Nice. All right. There's some complaints about me being too loud. I did. I did. I will. While well, Adam's adjusting this, I did <laughs> pick up a Tato Air Inferno. Yeah. Full sit down motion game, which I had never seen before. Okay. And I picked that up in Northern Wisconsin. It's a game where you fly a helicopter, complete with yoke control and foot control, Very and you've cool. got like the like side power control. So you're like. Both hands like a helicopter. The only thing you don't have is the rotary control on your left hand. Um, and you are putting out fires on ships. And it is wild. It is a really cool game. Very cool. Hey, gang, is this any better? Tell me if my volume's better. Yes. Volume check, check, check. Check, check, check. Check, check. 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 Did you mute Check, yourself? check, check. Uh, no, I, I'm just trying to adjust the the gain on my mic, my microphone. I think it's a little bit better. So... Sorry about that beep. I was. Uh, That's okay. Sorry, not That's anybody. okay. I think we're. Yeah. All right, guys. I uh, sorry. I'm a little loud. Uh, that's, that's how I am. Uh, so, uh, what I've been working on. Wait, wait a minute. Brian, are we going to talk about IAPA uh, and gadgets? Is what we're doing. We'll do that in gadgets. Okay. Yep. So, uh, what I've been working on, uh, first of all. Uh, is making it so I can park a car in my garage. I live in Minnesota, and there's this thing called snow and weather, and it sucks. And if you don't have a garage, you're screwed. So I've been working on getting a space in my garage. Well, also, the the fun thing is, is that I went through all my PCBs that were just stacked against each other, and I organized them in postal boxes because I'm looking to get 
rid of them. Um, so anyway, I found that I have three Donkey Kong boards, a Donkey Kong Jr. board, two Popeye boards, a Super Pac-Man board, which is a backup to my Super Pac-Man that works fine. And I've also got um, uh, two foot, two extra, count them, football, you know, Atari football. Atari football? Yeah. And I also have... Uh, a fire, tr- an extra fire truck board. So, and that doesn't even account for like the other game. Oh, and three Galaga boards and numerous uh, Williams CPU boards. Everything's getting organized finally, which is fantastic. So I'm looking. That's, oh. It's pretty awesome. Billy, um, Billy Seven has a question. Yeah. No. Do, ex- do you have an exterminator board in there? Do I have a? <laughs> Let me ask Billy Seven a question. Do you have a death wish? <laughs> okay, so Exterminator. Does ride a motorcycle. Wait a minute. Let me let me ask Paul. Paul, uh, wake up. Is he is he gone to sleep or is he just? What happened there? There he is. Oh God, I thought he was asleep, which is weird. Paul, question for you. Um, <laughs> here's your question. Uh. Now, do you know Warren Davis? No, I don't. Okay. All right. Well, that answers that question. <laughs> so, <laughs> he, <laughs> I know. He's made the worst arcade game that ever exists called Exterminator. Uh, but it's super rare. So, there's a couple of guys that are like, this is worth money. And it's, it's terrible. Nobody wants to play it. You know what? You know what they want to play? They want to play Pac-Man Plus. They want to play Super Pac-Man. They want to play Mortal Kombat. They don't want to play Exterminator. Nobody wants to play Exterminator. I mean, like the first game you walk into a. Okay. All right. I have a question for the chat. You walk into an arcade. And on the left, there's a Mortal Kombat. And on the right, there's an Exterminator. Which game do you play? You only have two quarters. That's it. 25 cents to play. Good thing. No. Go play Spy Hunter. By that, no, no. By then, Mortal Kombat was 50 cents. And Exterminator might as well have been $12. Because who wants to play it? (laughs) It was free play. Is the blood turned on for Mortal Kombat? That's what well, I of course it is. It's not a console. Well, yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah the, the green mist. That was a weird thing, huh? <laughs> Tell us about the green mist, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so they were bitching about the violence and the blood and gore, which is, you know, so cartoony and comical now, but uh, at the time. Sure. Uh, you know, so, so they built it an option where the, there was a switch inside that the arcade organ could flip. And uh, when you were decimated, there would be like a, a puff of green mist <laughs> instead of the bloody splatter and gore and such. And, and everybody was like, what the? Hey! <laughs> and there's Wait, something it's... wrong with the Mortal Kombat. It's got you green shit. <laughs> That's funny. Really, they're, they're, Logging <laughs> complaints. And something's wrong. Like the program is fucked up. Something's up. No, you're. Uh, <laughs> there's no filter on this show. We're already rated R. In fact, I think we're banned in most countries. So, yes. uh, Mr. Peabody, Green Mist. Oh, perfect. Let's go right home. Yeah. So, Mr. Mr. Peabody says Green Mist was the blood color on the Super Nintendo. I think it was actually um, uh, Super Nintendo was not allowed to have blood. And then there was a blood code for the Sega yeah. Master System. No, Genesis. The Genesis System. Or uh, oh, Se- what do they call that? They called that in the Europe. They called it the... Uh, the uh, What do they call the Sega Genesis? Anybody? Anybody? Saturn? No. No, that was later. That was later. Oh. It was the Mega Drive, they called it. Oh, right. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah, there's like an A B A C A B B V A code, blood code. They called it the blood code. You can get T-shirts that have the blood code on them to unlock the blood. You should get that on my scrubs. Yeah. Anyway, we'll talk it's about. Not a good, you it's should. Not a good t- unless there's blood on the walls. Uh, 
Now, uh, Paul, I don't know if you know or not, but Brian is our resident surgeon. He is a orthopedic surgeon. So, uh, oh, that's really awesome. Oh, well, that's even better. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it is. Better. <laughs> I like you already, brother. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I was a spine surgeon. So that ripping the spine out thing, it's, you know, I've wanted to do that many times. <laughs> So anyway, uh, for what I've been working on, I've been organizing boards and uh, working on uh, fire truck a little bit, uh, putting that back together. It's in the basement, as I mentioned in the last episode. Uh, pretty neat game. Uh, there's just a, a couple of tweaks. I haven't had a, a lot of time to work on. I've had a lot of family issues come up. Uh, I, shared, I shared with Paul during the beginning of the show, but I'm not going to share with you guys because uh, although I love you, I don't want to suggest you subject you to this uh, sort of uh, long conjecture about my. Anyway, I'm going to Florida and I'm going to miss first pl- free play for fl- Florida. Uh, but by the way, guess who are going to be at free play Florida this week? Paul and Brian. Oh, this guy. Oh, really? <laughs> Brian's going to be there also. Yes, I'll be there. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, well, we'll have to hang out first on that. You totally I should. I, my, I, got a I, to look at it. <laughs> I think that'd be fantastic. Please, you guys got to get to get together and 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 behind the scenes stuff. I'm not like serious. Like, just get together. Awesome. It's gonna be super fun. Awesome. Uh, uh, so I. Yeah, no, awesome. right. Uh, so Brian uh, and Mark and I have already talked about what we're. Uh, you might as well tell us about being at uh, Free Play Florida, Paul. That's what you're working on, right? Yeah, yeah, I, that just happened a couple of days ago. That was fantastic. Um, so uh, 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 Walter Day uh, put together a card for me, a, a trading card. So oh. I'm number three hundred. Well, I'm sorry, three thousand nine hundred ninety-six. <laughs> Fantastic. There was a lot of guys. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. But the couple in front of me, a couple, a few, you know. <laughs> I, anyway, I, I'm getting my own card. That's awesome. And, and it's going to be uh, um, issued at uh, Free Play Florida. So I, I called them up and said, hey, what are the chances of me coming down? And they said, oh, that'd be awesome. And then they, they told me about the, this terrible situation where they have somebody that was going to bring a bunch of pinball machines, and he fell off of a ladder and hurt his back, and now he's not coming, and I've got this gap, and you can fill it. Said, okay. So, and there you go. <laughs> well, that's great. Have, have, you, have you been before? No, Paul? no. This, this is the first time for me. Yeah. It's a great show. It really is. is it? Like, it's It's, you know... I mean, I, I love MGC, and I'm not going to say anything negative about anything going on, uh, but Free Play is really a wonderful show. It, it's a it's a fun place. It's it's kind of like the arcade guy's show, or arcade woman's show. Oh, arcade nice. Show. So. Nice. Yeah. Well, I, I know uh, Dan Vecina and uh, Tim Kitzer are going to be down there, too. So and that, that was kind of incentive for me to go and kind of hang out with those guys when we have a good time. So that'll be that'll be fun. That'll be definitely fun. Yeah, everybody raves about this, and and uh, the people who run the show have just been fantastic with me. Just really yeah. bent over backwards. Yeah. They're really just awesome. Uh, Except for Brian Jones, if he's in the chat, he's terrible. You never want to talk to him. We had Brian Jones on for the premiere <laughs> episode of this season. He was fantastic. <laughs> I loved it. I oh my gosh. Know- I just had a bunch of stuff shipped to him. He brought it out to me. He met me in a parking lot for this IAPA show. So I, I, I get to bad mouth. <laughs> <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> well, there's a lot, a lot of road noise all of a sudden. I, what happened? Yeah, to... hold on. I'll mute up. I'll mute up. <laughs> so, <laughs> I when you when you come back, let me know you, Mark, because I uh, I've okay. ar- I removed you from the. The video for now. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> so it's just us three. Uh, that means we should probably move on to a seg, I, a, some sort of segment. I got some gadgets. Some, I got some stuff. All right, let's do the cool. gadgets. All right, here we go. I always felt that the true stars at Atari was engineering. Oh, you're an inventor. Yes, I am. What have you invented? 
A lot of things. Like? Like a lot of things. Like things that you've heard of. Like? Well, things that you will have heard of, okay? Patents are patents. Arcade Gadgets with Brian the Clown. Oh, that's you. Oh, that's you. <laughs> oh, and you know what? Somebody said the video is private. What video? Oh, my gosh. It says it's not eligible to use. Your account is not eligible to use YouTube, whatever. All right. I'll get this posted at some point. So I'm down here at IAPA, and a lot of people uh, have heard this, but we are showing ice cold beer. It launched officially all the, the dribs and drabs talking about it, but we've been showing it at, at IAPA. And the feedback has been awesome. Um, I'll try it one more time. Wow, this is a long link. Let's see if that works. <laughs> but anyways, um, so the the whole idea is that we're converting uh, ice cold beer over to stepper motors from the old belt drives. We're using sensors on every hole. And I got to give a huge shout out to Aaron uh, with Crafty Mac. He has done an amazing job creating an F FPGA uh, emulation of the original board set with the original ROMs running. And um, it, it's been a blast. Uh, and the, literally, I will get the uh, I'll get the post up in a little bit. I'll, I'll get it converted after the uh, the um, segment. But literally, every operator's come by and said <laughs> it's about time somebody did this because ours break down all the time. Now, and, I mean, we've been hearing that over and over and over. So it's let just me been awesome. let me ask you a couple questions, Brian, because I, I, yes. you know I've talked about this, and you, you've talked to. At nauseum about it. So we, I, I know that. Uh, first of all, let's talk a little bit about. Um, uh, is the software original? So, so what's what we've done is like what Aaron's done on the Big Kit for a lot of games is recreate the board set in an FPGA, FPGA environment, and then we're running the original ROMs on that. So the machine is actually running off. The original ROMs, and it's it's astounding how well he's done. And what he's done is incorporated a video output for the machine that shows what's functioning, so that you can connect a monitor if you're having a problem with the machine, which you won't, because it'll be perfect. And but for our, for our listeners, uh, FPGA is Field Programmable Gate Array. We've talked about this many times on the show, but what it really essentially means is that we're at, we're not emulating software. Uh, at the software level, we're not we're not dependent upon uh, multiple different CPUs, AMD, Intel, whatever else. What's happening here is that we're uh, when we're talking about FPGA, we're talking about emulating at a hardware level, which means that all the the gates, all of the the timing, has been emulated at the lowest level possible to emulate the hardware that the ROMs would actually run in. So it's an actually a much more accurate representation of the game, which means if you emulate all of the gates and all of those paths, you can run those ROMs and you can have ice cold beer actually running as it should be on original hardware, essentially. So that's what FPGA means. <laughs> Uh, and I just wanted to bring that up again because I think it's important for the for the people that listen to the podcast. Uh, the guys in the chat probably already all know this. We go over this all the time, but still, uh, it, it's it's a really an amazing feat that you've done this. Now, on top of that, on top, well, gotta, on top of I that, I gotta give some I gotta give some credit because it is Aaron who's done it, right? And, and he he did it in order to understand the game play better. Yeah, And what came out of it was we started talking. I'm like, well, why do we need to do this on another chip? If you've got it running, right? let's just do it. So yeah. Yeah. the sound is impeccably perfect. Well, I mean, I, it's like, yeah. it's amazing. And, and, and the fun thing is, is that um, you've had operators come up and say, if you can solve the problems of this thing breaking, which are the stepper motors, right? Like that's, that's one of the things. Uh, they want to order tens of the things, you know, and yeah, then we, if go ahead. Yeah. It's been, I mean, basically we've been told is like, you know, I, however many places I have five, 10, 15, 20, hundred, some, one guy has 200 bowling alleys. They said, if you, I'm going to order X number, if those work and are reliable, like you say, we're, we're going to fill the rest of the places. So there's been a chat on KLOV about the, you know, we're charging 49.95 retail for it and there's been a chat about whether that's worth it 
I can tell you at the show, every operator said it's cheaper than every other game at my at this show. Now I want I want to interject here as well because that's collectors chiming in. They're like, well, they can just I literally today somebody said they can go pound sand if they if they think they're gonna get five grand for this machine. And I said, you're basically looking at a vertical pinball machine. What pinball machine in your mind can you buy brand new for less than f- five grand? None. Well, None. And, and- and one of the things that's interesting to me and we don't talk about on the show a lot is what we're seeing here is not the collector market, but the forty nine ninety five. I love it. Right, right. Any board is cheap. That's awesome, voices. <laughs> so the, the um, <laughs> um, people forget that these were machines to make money. And the yeah. operators are looking at this going, this game gets played nonstop at night on my locations, but yeah. it doesn't work after a week and I have to pull it off the floor. So if you give me something that works, yeah, I'm going to pay you for it. And what we've actually been told over and over, which is kind of surprising shows the contrast between the collector community and the operator community is the operators are telling us this is cheap. I mean, one lady stopped by and said, every game out here is eight to $20,000 that I want. Sure. You're yeah. telling me I can put this on every location and it has a small footprint and this is like, it's funny because the mentality of it's different. It has a small footprint. I can charge 50 cents for it. People are going to play the hell out of it. They're going to enjoy it. Or I can go buy a Hungry Hippos, which I'm going to put up, which is freaking awesome, yeah. for $21,000. Yeah. And it's going to take up eight times the amount of space. <clears throat> and so that's the, I mean, it's, it's an interesting contrast. But one of the things we haven't talked about much is we have a Bluetooth capability, connectivity to other games, and our whole plan is to create head-to-head games where, like, you can put it in. You have to decide: do I score the points on this round, or do I send a whammy to my opponent? And so, if you go up and say hit the red hole, all of a sudden your opponent's joysticks are flipped, and they got to play backwards, or now, they, see, they that, go the opposite see, direction. I gotta, I gotta say that that is this. First of all, this is a Tato property. Uh, fully licensed by Taito, which is a Japanese company. Uh, one of their most successful games is uh, Puzzle Bobble, or you know, and uh, if you guys remember Bubble Bobble, uh, the little dragons in that, they became uh, sort of the icons for Taito. And uh, one of their games is called Puzzle Bobble, and if you remember, it's a versus game. And you burst bubbles and there's different power ups that happen. So essentially this version of ice cold beer will very similar. Yeah. Yeah. will will maintain sort of the spirit of that title franchise. I mean, literally you're in a really, I mean, this is the most fantastic uh, time for this to come out because people want retro people, people want something that's, you know, reliable and the technology is so much more advanced than it was when this was released. It was released 1983? 83. 83? Yeah. yeah. So, so, I mean... This has really, really been a, a privilege to work on this. We've had a lot of fun. I mean, we had... I mean, literally a lot of uh, the, you know, guys who... It was neat. Like, I mean, Gary Stern stopped by the sh- booth today and was talking about the game. You know, I mean, it's just been, it's it's been a neat thing to see them kind of stop by and say, "This is well done. You've done this the right way." So, I mean, I, I tooting my own horn a lot, but um, it's been a blast, and, well, and I, I, it's a I, privilege I, to one, be able to do this. One more thing about the naysayers, and that is, uh, I I equated this to a vertical pinball machine. I mean, there's so much going on in this particular version of ice cold beer. It's actually it's it's actually no different than a pinball machine. You you, you might not have the ramps, but you've got the software behind it. It's going to be phenomenal when it comes out. And if you could go into a bar and have side by side like uh, competition play, just think of like Killer Queen and how how popular that is, or any of the the modern like interactive games and Nolan Bushnell's talked about this for years like the key to games and bars is that you are playing with somebody you know uh, this yep. is a, this is important so while this game is super fun by itself and is going to have value by itself and the fact that you know it's 95 percent 
it, it's going to have 95% more uptime than the old machines. Uh, that's in and of itself an accomplishment. But now you're adding like competition play and scoreboards and like it's going to be super fun. I, I can't like it's super exciting. I think people should be really excited about this. It was kind of fun because we had, you know, like the guys talking about, well, if you could do leaderboards, like, uh, yeah, we got that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We also, um, I'll say one more thing about it and I'm going to move on because I got some other things I want to hit. But um, we had the world record holder stop by the booths. We <laughs> played this game 34 hours straight. That's awesome. And it's like, I mean, I'm not sure whether I say like congratulations or what are you smoking? <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, Paul, Paul, have you played ice cold beer? Hey, get some. Uh, like a zillion years ago. Yeah. But you remember, it's like this analog yeah. game in a digital I remember, world. I remember. Yeah. yeah. I, now, I remember seeing it at the uh, show back in like 83 or so. Uh, yeah. 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 We, we also had um, one of the things I'll say it was. It's kind of neat. We had the guy stop by and say the, the creator of the game who passed away three or four years ago, um, they said that he he would really have appreciated it. And ironically, one of the guys was saying he had enough training that he was actually, he said a PhD, and I got to look this up because I haven't had a chance to yet. But they said he basically could have been a doctor but decided not to be. It was kind of funny talking to the guys about the stuff, but um, made a few people get kind of really nostalgic about it. It was, it was fun. That's cool. Uh, it was really neat to hear. So I'm now, gonna um, whiskey flippers asking are there any public orders? Not yet. We haven't we're not selling it until it's hundred percent. Um, but we we're we're gonna let people know as soon as it is, it is available. I wanted to hit a few other games that I saw at the show that I thought were awesome. Sure. Go really ahead. Crazy stuff. One of them I'm gonna put in the chat right now. Hopefully it's public. For those of you that remember Hungry Hungry Hippos, I mean it, oh. I grew up on hungry hippos and there was the redemption game that you could like push down the lever on they have a full sit down four player you're sitting on a hippo and you're pulling a lever and catching balls i i mean if it wasn't twenty one thousand, i was in i i went over to the booth i'm like okay so i got a, a trailer that's going back empty how much is this thing if i buy it from the show because i need hungry hippos in my life I, it's it was cool. it was amazing now, uh, also, there was this really cool Ferris wheel, like, uh, water slide. And I'm not, I'm, I, this is like the most amazing thing. Like, you get into it, you, you enter, and then when you slide into the main part of the water slide, it starts rotating like a, a Ferris wheel. And you, you go intertwined inside it. And then you pop out the other side. I mean, it's. It, okay, that's it, it pretty cool. It doesn't even start doing that. It actually like it's constantly rotating, and they time you going into this, and and so like you have like this long tube that like coils in and around itself like a Mobius strip, and so you constantly slide around this thing until you shoot out. It's it's like it's an brilliant. it's it's like uh it's like uh inner tubing in an Ansel Adams painting. It it really is. <laughs> The other thing that's I mean, wow. <laughs> Man, I'm fascinated by this. It's, it's really cool. cool. In the chat, I can send you if Paul, if you can't see the chat, I can send you some of the links later. It was really cool. I just that's posted awesome. es Escalera released a uh, a new pinball dolly, or they didn't release it yet. They're going to release it Q1 or Q2, and um, they're they're putting it out there. Uh, they want to actually um, so. What they're trying to do is make something that's integratable with their stair climbing dolly. It has omnidirectional wheels on it. It is phenomenal. It takes like any uh, home tool battery. So you can put an 18 volt <laughs> battery in there and make it go up and down. It really is a, a well-designed pinball dolly, which is crazy. We haven't seen pinball dollies redesigned in years. I have Wicco dollies, right? I mean, companies that haven't existed in years and these guys have them out there. So check that out. I'm going to post right now. Because I know you guys love uh, love the one ups, but there's a company called I Arcade that I'm posting about. We're sharing the booth with them. They're a Tato company. They're a Tato partner, and these guys actually released a game system that you can download games to. It's seventy nine ninety nine from Best Buy, but it is a it, it does emulate the games, um, but it's super cool. It's really well done. 
their dragons their art is actually phenomenal <laughs> i really was impressed by it it was and it's fully fully licensed the last thing i'm going to put up and this was this blew me away i mean i was like this was i, I need to get on this machine i haven't had a chance to it's a company out of switzerland called birdly and they started out making emulation software for tourists to fly like a bird over cities. And what they have at the show is a virtual reality, immersive motion flight suit emulator. And so you are with a fan in front of you, I just threw the video out, flying through <laughs> valleys. And it has like your hands have like they can wave and go up and down to adjust your flight. And it is unbelievable. Again, another game I asked about, I said, so if I wanted to go home with this, how much? And the guy looked at me and goes, Oh, in euros or US dollars? I said, US dollars. It only ninety five thousand. I said Now I have to I have to inter I have to interject here, Brian, because you know, we invited this guest on and um, we've done like a half an hour of gadgets, which is great. We're done. That was it. Oh, oh, that's it. I like uh, the gadgets, dude. Those are awesome. <laughs> I, I've got. I, wait, let me see if I have. I, I may have one more. I may have one more. Let's see. Oh, okay. No, I, no, I you, have... you don't have any more. Just put them in the chat, and we're moving on to the next <laughs> section. That's how it's working. <laughs> like we, it's we're axe throwing. We're not like. Well, pressure, pressure's on me now. I have to be more interesting than the gadgets. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously. Yeah, like it's not too hard. Uh, we're gonna have to have Paul. We'll have a makeup episode with Paul <laughs> where we're like, we're so sorry that you didn't, you run on this show. I will, I will finish it by saying, guys, if you ever have a chance, this is a show. If you're an arcade lover, you got to go to this show. I mean, this is like amusements, rides. I mean, there are Ferris wheels and roller coasters <laughs> inside. It's it really, it's, it's just a blast. And All it's right. neat to see people. And everybody there is excited about this stuff. Okay, I mean, chatters, funny. I'd like you to comment on, on whether or not you think Brian is breathy, because he, I think, I think he's breathy. Okay, uh, we're going to do another uh, uh, segment we call it News. All right. Um, The R.K. News, arcades, pinball, industry alumni, arcade openings, selected, celebrities, world record holders, operators, coin-out, conventions, the R.K. News. We interrupt the ventilation. And now, the R.K. News with... Oh, jeez, uh, that's with me. Uh, we just totally, like, we totally cut my cut me off. Like, you know, somebody sat on the board. Uh, anyway, uh, the news, arcade news. Uh, from Atari.com, Atari XP is launching new game cartridges. Uh, that means brand new Atari 2600 cartridges. So your old Atari that's sitting in your, your back corner of you've been collecting for years uh, is now going to be able to have th at least three new cartridges. And they're on pre-order right now. One of them is uh, uh, called Yars Return. One of them uh yars revenge uh yars return uh and then saboteur and uh well, the third one is uh let's see uh yars return oh and aqua adventure aqua adventure which is like i don't know what there anyway uh i reached out to howard <laughs> i reached out to howard scott warshaw and i said uh i think um this is cool, but I'm wondering if you're involved in it anyway. And he has actually uh, since reached out to Atari XP and said, hey, what the heck's going on with this? And also, I have nothing to do with Yars Return. That was invented by Kurt Vendel, uh, who has passed away, uh, unfortunately. Um, but he was probably one of the biggest Atari fans out there. And um, anyway, uh, so... Uh, very interesting that there's going to be new game releases, but they're very expensive for just the cartridge. We're talking 50 bucks a piece. And then if you want like a, you know, limited edition with the box and the manual, you're, you're talking about $150 each, which I think is a little bit much for an Atari game uh, that was never released probably for a good reason. So, uh, that's, that's the latest for Atari, uh, 
uh, uh, news, and I, and I, I have another one, but uh, it's it's just not worth mentioning. Uh, well, maybe it is from UnionLeader.com. Uh, fun spot. You guys know Fun Spot? Either of you? Nah. <laughs> Come on. So Fun Spot. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. In New Hampshire, uh, it it one of the oldest arcades. New Hampshire Fun Spot. That right, right, one. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the founder Bob Lawton has died. Uh, at age 90, which is, it's sad, uh, but he was 90. So that's a pretty freaking good run. If you ask me, um, <laughs> I, I, I'm aiming for a hundred, but you know, if I make it to like 69, I think I'm pretty good at the point. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, anyway, the fun spot staff announced Lawton's death on social media uh, Thursday afternoon. Uh, and it's sad because there's a lot of people out there that uh, got into this hobby because of a little, a couple little documentaries, one called Fistful of Quarters and the other called Chasing Ghosts. Um, but, you know, a lot of us didn't know about Fun Spot until those showed up. So, uh, and then, of course, John Jacobson uh, of John's Arcade had uh, a few bro fists out there as well. So that's kind of sad. It's kind of sad. Uh, so Fun Spot hit the the big time in 1977 when video games started becoming popular, and uh, and uh, Bob Lawton, L A W T O N, uh, he was the guy. Uh, so anyway, sad. Uh, a, a little nod to Bob Lawton at Fun Spot, and uh, that's all I'll say about that. So the next, the next, <laughs> well, the next segment's hard to do without Mark. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta step up, Adam. I I don't know if I can. I mean, like, when was the last time? What was the last time I led this segment? I I don't know if I can do it without Mark. <laughs> you got it. You're in. <laughs> Get in the game, Adam. Off the bench. Oh my gosh. Uh, so you guys uh, may have heard about uh another little segment we like to do, which is uh you know. <laughs> Are, are the cues like especially loud tonight? They seem loud. I don't know. Back in '82, I used to be able to throw a pigskin a quarter mile. Back, back to the to cave, the cave. With, with Time Runner. What happened? Are we still connected to one another? I believe so. <laughs> oh, I can hear. Well, I uh, tried muting it. it didn't go away. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, still here. Yeah. Do, do I hear Mark in there at all? Is Mark here? No. He's not even in the. He's not even in the list anymore. He he ditched us. Well, that guy. Three four. All right. Let me, yeah, okay. that's what it's, it's, let's see. Uh, let's see what happens when I try to add it. Then there were three. I know that's just <laughs> us, right? No, too bad. I, I want to talk Satan Hollow with him. Oh. I know, and he has. He had a 720 story. We're gonna have to have a whole different episode to have Mark. We're gonna have to interview Mark on the next episode. Yeah. What about my Satan's Hollow? All that I, is I cool. Just, just happened. That's beautiful. Just happened. Uh, yeah. this, this is a prototype. This is a prototype of, of uh, the Heather. Here, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, yeah. oh yeah. <laughs> wacko stuff. Oh. oh my gosh! So Brian, <laughs> Brian, Paul, Paul oh, did the art for sorry. Tron, Tapper, Satan's Hollow, Wacko, like. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, Mark, you're back! Check this out. Thirty-eight year old Mark rendering of the header. Oh, that's a pack rat. I saved everything. I just saved everything. That's great. So funny. Yeah, crazy, huh? All right, Mark. We we're gonna have to have an abridged version of this. Uh... Oh, check this out. Oh, oh my! Ooh. I want Tapper two. Tapper two. Oh my god! Tapper two. No, you know what this was? This originally uh, that we we had talked about doing like a like a big oval shaped or round shaped uh, marquee. 
and all, like, Let's like, do a, it. like an actual bar kind, 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 kind of like like uh, 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 like Cheers. You know that was that was the, uh, yes. Uh, oh my God, that is beautiful. Yeah, so that was the very first. That thing I just showed you. That was the very first uh, uh, shot at at uh, you know a logo or a header. You know, we were just we were just noodling around some ideas, and that that was the first one that came out of it. So. Oh my God, Paul! We should make a topper for the game that goes on top of the game. That is that. Well, I mean, that's that's what we were talking about doing. But you you know what what killed it cost. Well, I, I'll tell you I'll tell you what'll resurrect it is a bunch of arcade collectors going nuts over it. That would be cool. Uh, okay, first first of all, I would definitely, I would definitely do it. Yeah. Now here's yeah, a, so. here I just have an uh, interjection here. First of all, if you're going to do a topper, great, do a topper. But I also want for people that own the cocktail machine something you can hang on the wall. There you go, the tapper topper. I, I did, I did, I did brass, I did brass glass clips for you. What more do you need? I need a tapper topper I can hang on the wall. <laughs> well, Mark has rejoined us. Mark, do you want to uh, be involved with this section about? Uh, back to the cade or what's going on um well what i think you're gonna need to do is just read my uh okay my, uh, okay. my little opening blurb it's a you know it's just like last week where we're gonna read a movie review from sure Are you still sure? oh yeah yeah sorry I, everybody froze because i'm like oh yeah you're, you're watching me talk Right, we're reading a movie review about an arcade game, and uh, you're supposed to guess who it is. All right. What the movie is. So, uh, Chatters, uh, guess which arcade movie Roger Ebert is talking about. One of my favorite uh, uh, reviewers of all time, and uh, I actually corresponded with him a few times. Uh, I could tell that on another time in the show. But here it is. He says, there is one additional observation I have to make about this movie and i don't really want to to sound like a criticism this is an almost wholly technological movie although it's populated by actors who are engaging or sinister it is not really a movie about human nature like star wars or the empire strikes back but much more so the movie is a machine to dazzle and delight us it is not a human interest adventure in any generally accepted way that's all right, of course. It's brilliant at what it does, and in a technical way, might be uh, as groundbreaking uh, for a generation of movies in which computer-generated gener universes will be the background for a mind-generated stories about emotionally-generated personalities. All things are possible. I'm sure by now the the chatters have gotten this, right? Have they figured it out? I don't see any guesses, or my chat's just behind. Oh, that's that's possible too. Oh. You know. Uh, oh wait, Mr. Peabody. Yeah, Mr. Peabody Tron. got it. It's Tron. That's correct. So that little soliloquy was about Tron. Uh, the answer is Tron. Nineteen eighty uh, three is not correct. Uh, Eighty two is correct. Uh, so welcome to the season oh, six. <laughs> <laughs> I've. I have to correct Mark's copy because, you know, <laughs> if you're talking about E. Dot, that's 1983. But if you're talking about like Tron, that's 1982. So uh, we're on to the next, uh, <clears throat> the next section, which Mark always likes to ask me the question of what's in the hey, joke. Adam. What's in the joke? <laughs> And Mark, tell us how the game is played. <laughs> Hello and welcome to What's in, the, What's in the Juke. The game within a game within a podcast. <laughs> Tonight's theme is prog rock. <laughs> Figure that out. Hey, oh, look, a spot. Okay, hold on, I'm parking. Um, right. hey, if you can guess the title of the song, you're going to get... Oh, yeah. Half point. Correct. If you can guess the artist of the song, you will also get... Half point. 
Yeah, if you can guess both artist and title, congratulations. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, if you don't know the answer, fight it out. Dang. Okay, now let's. So that's good. Now good. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. So here comes your well, first. And I, What's and that? I will throw in an award for tonight's show. Oh. We've got ice cold beer coasters. Okay. Now they have nice, to. 60 mil thick, beautiful beer coasters. We'll send off six of them to whoever wins. Six. Awesome. Let's go. Okay. For, uh, all right. Here comes your first track. <laughs> so this would be great if you had a mono radio back in the day. Wow, that's painful. Uh, um, I hope I hope so. I hope somebody in the chat gets that. <laughs> it's not. It's not Ozzy. It's not Fleetwood Mac. I grew up with Do you know who it is, Paul? No idea. Okay, that that was. Oh, that's great! So that was Genesis uh, dancing in. The, oh my god! I was, I, oh my god! I was actually thinking that. With the, thought, oh my god! I was with the, like Genesis. Yeah, Genesis <laughs> with the with the moonlight with the moonlit night. Okay, all right. So, uh, oh my god! I was yeah. actually thinking that. All right, here comes oh your, here here comes your next track. Okay, well, I trust my God here. There's no negative points. Every Maybe shot not I taken misses. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's where you grew up. I can't take that out. <laughs> nice. Okay. Let's think it's a brick. I think that's great. It is thick as a brick. Jeff. Even backwards, it was. I love Mr. Peabody's autocorrect. Metro Tull. Yeah, he's like, Metro Tull. I will not. I'm going to give that to our guest. Well played. Wow, I'm, I'm one and a half for two here. <laughs> <laughs> so our guest just got half point. Our guest just got half point. Point. I love it. All right. <laughs> All right. So your your next track is uh, this. <laughs> <laughs> it is tubular bells that is correct so a half point for that answer and who actually sang it chatters can you give us uh, the answer there that crow's got it all right so you got a half point, half point. for mike odefeld uh which is you know that's pretty good okay here comes your next track well here it comes any day now <laughs> It's got a slow intro. Uh, if if you it, it, let me just give you a hint, there's a laser light show going on right now, and there's lots of people smoking pot. So <laughs> not narrowing it down, <laughs> which is great because like there's not going to be any <laughs> there's not going to be any music for like the next twenty seconds because the intro is so quiet. All right, here we go. Grinwing got the band. No, just kidding. <laughs> he might have. <laughs> Here we go. Mr. Peabody got Pink Floyd. He's just good. This is the worst. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
probably got the name too. Breathe. Now uh, here's breathe. a. Yeah, <laughs> that's correct. Breathe. Uh, speak yeah. to. Speak to me. Breathe is uh, correct. So that's uh, another half point, half point for Mr. Sit, Peabody. Sit, 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 sit. <laughs> Here's a funny thing: is like we're listening. <laughs> it's like we're listening to this on an AM. You remember those AM radios you got when you were a kid, and you didn't, and you're like, okay, uh, where's the FM? Because like that's where all the good stuff is. But you got an AM radio when you were like eight you're years not old. old enough to remember that. Oh, for sure. And I'm like, I remember the little oh, little science kit, really? with no battery. Oh yeah, yeah. And you're like, well, I remember the first time I got an AM radio as a gift, and I was like, this is an insult, because uh, there's there's a whole other band <laughs> that we're not getting to listen to. Okay, <laughs> so. <Yeah. laughs> they're they're trying, they are purposely trying to keep us from FM. Right. I want they, FM more now than I ever wanted it. I don't exactly. even know it's on FM, and I want it. Okay. <laughs> Exactly. All right. right. So it's human nature. Ooh, I know how to sell FM. Don't let them have it. <laughs> okay, here comes your next Stand track. <laughs> and that's how FM was so popular. Oh my god. We figured it out. <laughs> okay, here comes here comes your next track. <laughs> it wasn't a question. <laughs> There you go. That's a full point, full point. for the guest. That's awesome. All right, all right, yeah. Now we oh, uh, we don't. We're on a Floyd roll, man. Yeah. I can do this all as, night. As, so we normally <laughs> exclude the guest from the competition because you hear it before they do. But we don't really care tonight. He's we're just. Old and they know, and they live through all this. Shit. We're, exactly. Yeah, so. All right. Here comes your next track. <laughs> Wow. These <laughs> Do we give anyone I else? Those guys. Me too. I actually have a, I have a rush uh, um, uh, uh, what you call the station, uh, Pandora station. I that's to all the time. that's great. Uh so uh wow, uh Mike Page hey. got rushed right away and then it was Tom Sawyer with uh that would have been Grinwing. So good job you guys each get a half point. And should, uh, I, should I not be jumping in? Is it, oh no, this is like, we're having fun. Uh, this is just total. Do, do what you got to do. Yeah, we're having fun. Okay, I'm gonna play one more track tonight. One more track, uh, and then we're we're calling it a night uh, for what's in the juke. So here here it comes. <laughs> Kidding me. Yes. Close to the edge. It is yes, but that's not close to the edge. Uh close to the edge is close to the edge. Oh, uh, This is close to the edge. Oh yeah, let's see. That would be which what is it? Mr. Peabody got it. Oh he did. Heart of the sun. Heart of the sun rise. Uh, All right. Okay, so that yeah, another half point for half point. the guest and a half point for half point. Mr. Peabody. All right, that was pretty awesome. I want to say uh, thank you for playing, and everybody's a winner tonight, and you all get trophies. Uh, and I think, I think, wait, Mr. Wait. I have a list. I made a list. You I don't think, want to know? I think, I, I think Mr. Peabody won. Our guest came in first place with 2.5. Mr. Peabody in second place with two. We had a three-way tie with Oldfield, Grinwing, and Mike Page in third place. And I'm going to say this. Everybody who got on the scoreboard tonight, we're going to send you ice cold beer po- coasters, okay? All right. That's so, awesome. You all get some. All right. So uh, if you want ice bold, ice bold coasters, uh, 
send send a Facebook message to Brian uh, or an email to Brian B R Y A N at arcaderadio.com and claim your prize tonight because he's going to send you those and I have nothing to do with sending them. He's sending them, not me. He's sending them. All right. So, uh, but I think you know what. Uh, first of all, uh, everybody, thanks for playing. Really fun. Uh, and also, we need to move on to what we like to call the interview. No, no, you, you have a voicemail. What? Is a voicemail? Check the voicemail. Out. Oh man, I hate checking the voice. Okay, here we go. I'm checking the voice. Oh, there is a voicemail. Okay. I, I I wanted to get to the interview. You know, it's like 8.30. We're past time. Like, I mean, Paul is getting tired here. Okay, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so to, our, our, our interview our interview is going to be like 20 minutes. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, Thank you for calling 612-548-GAME. This is Arcade Radio. Please leave your message after the tone. Hey, everybody. It's your buddy. Well, it okay. <laughs> what happened? Mark, are you try still... Again. I don't know what happened. Down... Let's try that again. Hey, everybody. It's your buddy, Bob Zarzadek, control panel expert, hand technician. Hey, it's only been five minutes since I last called, and I uh, hope this message is not too stale. We're we're just about to start this game thing here. We're we're going and the, the timer says it's about to start and uh, <laughs> What the heck did that lady just say? Something about it insignia alpha beta? What's that mean? <laughs> Whoa man, this super huge Russian stocking doll just turned around to look at me. So, uh, huh, not much is going on. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait, there's a, there's a guy next to me. He's shrugging his shoulders, like super shrugging it to his friends. Oh, hey, holy crap, are you okay? Well, they, they must not have liked how he shrugged his shoulders. Oh, man, oh, oh. okay, I, I think I get it now. So just as long as you don't shrug your shoulders. I don't get it. Hey, everybody, if you shrug your shoulders, they're going to shoot you. You better not scream either. Oh. No, no, no. I said don't scream. Oh, man. Oh, the carnage. Hey, hey, Arcade Radio. Uh, I think I may need to pay attention to this and not you. Uh, Someone tells me I do not grasp all the instructions that I was told. Oh, man. Hey, so you, so you guys have a great show tonight for episode two of season six. I'm going to tiptoe over to the other side while this big doll isn't looking at me, all right? Stars the deck out. Um, I'm a little lost on what was happening there. That was insane. Um, you know, I... Bob has called in a number of times. This is probably the most disturbing call uh, we've ever had. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, all the jail calls seem pretty good compared to this one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I'm all weirded out by this call. Uh, and, it, and with that, I think we should actually move in to what we like to call the interview. Let's please welcome to the show one more time, Mr. Paul E. Niemeyer. Hey, how's it going? So, in case you didn't know, this show is supposed to be about you. Oh, oh. <laughs> the entire thing was geared around you being here. Uh, and so far, we've been very happy with your interaction. <laughs> 
So like, uh, well, we, okay. <laughs> we usually start out with a number of questions, uh, that have to do with, you know, your arcade origins and where you got started and all that sort of thing. But I think it'd be great if you could tell us, uh, a little bit about your start at, um, Bally and how you got into the industry. And then we'll get into things like Tron and Satan's Hollow and Mortal Kombat and Pac-Man and Pac-Man Plus or Super Pac-Man and Pac-Man Plus or Professor Pac-Man and all those other things. But, uh, give us a little background on how you wound up at Bally Midway. That boy, that is, that is a crazy coincidence too. Uh, I, uh, I was working at a sign company on the Southwest side. Okay. First of all, uh, going back to college, we used to skip class to go and uh, hit the, uh, the student union and play pinball. Oh, I mean, we were just, uh, Oh yeah. Just addicted to pinball. You know, we, we stayed around long enough for, for, uh, to get, get, uh, you know, uh, get registered on the you know, dock and out the door we'd go over to the union and play pinball at all so which that's where i really got my, my which which games did you like oh boy i don't even remember back then who knows i mean it's got it's like 40 <laughs> two years ago <laughs> fair enough fair enough now Come if on, i man, give me a break. 42 years <laughs> And the 80s were in between that, and I did a lot of damage in the 80s, so, okay. <laughs> keep going, keep so, going. Uh, so anyway, uh, I kind of made a promise to myself when I got out of college in 79 that uh, I was you know, I was going to do artwork on a pinball game. Eventually, someday, I'm going to figure out a way to get you know, over to, I don't know, Stern or, or Gottlieb or Bally or somewhere. I'm going to get on the team, you know. So... Fast forward to 1982, and I'm working at a sign shop on the southwest side of Chicago, uh, designing signs, and I'm bored. And at night, I would go home, and I would uh, uh, work fervently until the wee hours of the night on, on my portfolio of sci-fi stuff and fantasy art. And I don't know what the hell I was going to do with it. All I knew is that, that that's what I wanted to do, and I figured that's that's what you want to do, to fill a portfolio full of that stuff and see what happens. So uh, one day... I was working, and I got a phone call from three different friends who didn't even know each other, all saying they saw the same ad in the paper uh, for an artist at Valley Midway. Dude, it's describing you. You got to go down there. So when I got the first phone call, I was like, yeah, great idea. So the second one, I was like, wow, what a coincidence. Third one, I was like, oh, my God, the universe is kicking my ass. I got to go down there. <laughs> so, so I did. I called them up, and... Uh, it was four interviews before I finally got the job. I, I didn't th- I think I was ever going to get the job. And uh, yeah, every interview got, got the, the room got bigger and more people uh, were in it. And uh, uh, I think the first time I talked to like just uh, one person, I, I think maybe Rich Scafidi, I believe I talked to for a very first interview. And, and it was, <laughs> it was real brief. In fact, I just kind of got the stuff on the, on the table and they're kind of looking over and they're going, okay, well, you know, we got your card and everything. I thought, Oh, <laughs> that's the end of that but, you know, they, they call me back you know for another interview and I'm like oh my god oh my god you know because it just it was just so short and sweet and, you know yeah we got your car we you know don't call us we'll call you you know um yeah so four interviews worth later then but the, the last interview was, was a whole conference table there were like a dozen people you know sitting and, and, and uh, passing this stuff around and you know asking a bunch of questions uh I was like, oh, baby, I'm in the big time. <laughs> and uh, so when I got there, when I when, when they finally, when they actually, when they combined the two art departments, was when I first started there, um, it, it was just me and Larry Dayback and uh, Rich Graffiti. He was my boss. And, and uh, we're waiting for Paul Ferris and all the uh, Bally art gods to show up. And, and we're going to do this, this combined art department which was an amazing, that was the best job I ever had. It really was. Those two years that I was in, in that, that department with you know, like, like uh, uh, Margaret Hudson and Tony Ramone, I'm going to just drop names here, uh, Greg Ferris and uh, you know uh, Pat McMahon and Doug Watson, good friend Doug Watson. He, he, in fact, Doug, when he's, when he's in Chicago, he stays in my house. We're, 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 we've been good friends ever since then, back then. You know? So uh, not, not just meeting art 
gods, but you know, they're, they're really awesome people to know too. So it, it was really fantastic. So I was fanboying. You know, I'm, I'm sitting at my, my desk and I'm in a cubicle and I'm like, holy shit. You know, like, the Doug Watson sitting right over there. We used to play his game. Like, okay, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You know? My boss is Paul Effing Ferris. Oh my God. Oh, by the yeah. way, for listeners, uh, Paul Ferris uh, did several pinball machines, including Xenon. Uh, oh, he's an art god. Just, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and um, uh, it's, it's funny. Uh, like, okay, Paragon. That's a perfect example of uh, uh, some of his, his uh, classic art. Uh, he was a bodybuilder. And uh, he and his wife were bodybuilders. Me and too. All, all... I'm also a bodybuilder. <laughs> Yeah, but like building size is not bodybuilding, Adam. <laughs> what are you What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, there was there was exercise involved with them. <laughs> oh, that oh, <laughs> that's a different kind of bodybuilding. You're working and, now, maybe. Yeah, and the ex- <laughs> just on the exercise we're going getting. The exercise is not getting so done. The whole game's down your stairs. <laughs> <laughs> So, so anyway, that, that's that's always his wife, the, the, the beautiful blonde that, that's uh, always stretched out in the foreground of, of uh, the artwork. That's his wife, yeah, and uh, it was great that he, you know, he always always included her in the in the artwork. Uh, uh, they, they were they were great. Uh, he, he always threw great parties, and I would go over to his house. He had two stuffed lions, real lions. You know? Oh, that's weird. That is weird. <laughs> It, it was fun. It was it was a fun, crazy time back then. It, it was it was definitely extravagant, and uh, you know we were living large. I was young and stupid. And we were all young and stupid. Oh, it was great I love fun. That. <laughs> That's great. So, what was the first uh, what was the first game you worked on uh, that you drew any artwork for? Okay, um, hmm. you know I, I think it was probably uh, um, Super Pac Man. Okay, yeah. so that's great because both Mark and I, uh, that was like, it's like one of our favorite games of all time. Uh, oh, cool. I I have a cocktail version. I tell the story on the show uh, several times. Uh, there was a little place called the Taco House. I got to play this cocktail version of the game. I finally got my own cocktail version. Mark did this amazing restoration video of him picking up a Super Pac-Man. We both agree that of all the Pac-Mans, we enjoy that one the most. Uh, oh, cool. So oh, that's really cool. Uh, so tell us oh, what, what the artwork yeah. you worked on for that. Yeah. Well, okay, well, well Super Pac-Man, uh, well, let's talk a little bit about, about that. Um, they sent me those characters, and I had to clean them up, and they, they, they had the style and everything. I mean, it was very defined what I was doing. Those okay, were, okay. Those weren't my characters. Uh, so those were provided characters. Um, but the funny thing is, and, and you'll see across the board, yeah. there is no defined Pac-Man character. It's just all over the place. Yeah. Okay. Uh, including Pac-Man Plus. I mean, I was given full range. Yeah, just do whatever you want to. You know, we need two little <laughs> characters, and uh, uh, <clears throat> right. Uh, and uh, I had, oh, I, I had little gloved hands. I went, oh, too, too much like the mouse. You know? Yeah, for so, sure. You know, yeah. you know those assholes, you know. No. And then, uh, in, in the same swoop, where we made it, made them like welder gloves. He's got welding gloves on. Uh, in Batman I, Plus, they put boots on him too. They made me put boots because I, I had a little round bubble shoes. They're like, nope, too much like the mouse. Now, here's the interesting thing about that is <laughs> that they carried those elements over to uh, the like the animated show. So there's boots and gloves yeah. and all that stuff. And, and a I, hat. I, I mean, yeah, yeah. So oh, I, I guess they're emulating what I did. I don't know. Sure, yeah. Let's go with that. <laughs> I mean, seriously, like it's, it's kind of cool, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, okay, here's the thing too. Like, um, I, I did the first pack of that um, when, when we did Pac-Man Plus because I needed the word plus. <laughs> and then we needed the words exciting new. Okay. Which is weird. So like, okay, well, where, where are we going to get that? And they're like, well, it doesn't exist. Well, then make it. <laughs> yeah. So I thought, well, how about, well, we'll probably, if that's the case, we're probably going to need an entire alphabet. 
you're a goddamn genius. <laughs> you know? Yes, do the whole album, man. Oh, my God. Well, you know, <laughs> this is really coming together. You know? <laughs> now, the funny thing is... is yeah, it's, it's funny. We're laughing, but it's kind of, that's kind of how things went. You know, you're, It's almost, almost like somebody has a great revelation. Oh, my God, we should do the whole album, man. <laughs> like, yes. Well, now, I, w- I want to ask a question of the chatters. Uh, so Pac-Man Plus comes out, uh, and it has a new gameplay and it, it's actually quite fun. Uh, but to me as a kid, when they painted exciting and new on there, it seemed like a lie, you know, it's, <laughs> it seemed like somebody was trying to get me to take the candy from the van. I'm just you saying. It. You took it. You got it right in the van. You're like, Let's okay. Go so like my point is, is that I love the fact that you had to do this artwork. I also think that it was like a little bit of a snow job <laughs> where they're like, okay, kids are going to love this if you paint exciting and new on it, which is just not true. Not true at all. Candy in the van. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You're back to the candy in the van. Not okay. So anyway. <laughs> I, I don't write the copy. I just do it the tell. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So here's a question for you. Here's a question. You know, they, they didn't come to me. Hey, hey Paul, you're 24 years old. You know, um, you got no experience. What's your marketing feel? <laughs> right, 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 right. Exciting new and a big fucking explosion. Oh, that's good, man. Yeah. I oh, love it. I love it. <laughs> now, okay. I have a serious question for you. Now, since we're talking <laughs> about. <laughs> Since we're talking about Pac-Man, Pac-Man yeah. Plus, I love the story of how you snuck your initials in. So tell us about that. Oh, yeah. Oh, we, we, okay, first of all, we're, we're never allowed to sign anything or get any credit. And uh, Paul Ferris just had a, a, he had a huge problem with that. He, he always did. And he always signed his stuff boldly. He didn't care. He didn't care right. what, what the rules were. Right. But every once in a while, they'd, they'd trot him upstairs for a meeting, and he'd come back down. And I, my, my desk was in a unique spot in the art department of that. Anybody that came and went in the art department had to go past my desk. <laughs> you know, so he, so he, come, he comes back from a meeting. You know, he's, he's got that look on his face like, those fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, he, and he just, you know, he wouldn't even say anything. He just waved it. Wave everyone to the center. Get, just gather in. Get, this won't take long. This won't take long. Right. Uh, the guys right. upstairs, they're bitching about signing the stuff. So here's my my feel on that. Don't get caught. Sure. Don't get caught. That's it. <laughs> and, and the point was, just hide it well enough so that it is it somehow slipped into production. Because once it hit production, and they cut those screens... Too expensive to go backwards, and that's why my initials are on Pac-Man Plus, right? My, my little little, little P E N forever. I love it. Forever. I love it. <laughs> forever and ever. Yeah. Now, <laughs> I, was, it, I was actually shocked that that one got through. Now, I want to say it's usually when it's real stark and clean, you know, it's hard to hide stuff. You know? There, there are reproductions where. Um, there are reproductions where that's not in there. Oh, are there really? Yeah, like they've screwed up. <laughs> like uh, I think a, a sk- oh, Namco, your lawyers have struck again. And, and, <laughs> and in particular, I think Escape Pod has produced uh, marquees for Pac-Man Plus that don't have the pen. Uh, you know, so it's like, Whoa. where where did you steal your artwork from? If you're not stealing it from the original, I'm like, like seriously, if you're gonna steal it, steal it right. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that, that's that's funny and like ironically weird, actually. That that you know that, that it, uh, somehow was eliminated anyway. You know? Right. So, <laughs> uh, like, uh, okay, you know, I thought it was for forever. It's not I, for forever. Oh, my I God. I have a selfish question. Um, okay. You get your you get your initials in this marquee, right? It's no. and it's P E N, and you're like. What do you like? Do you go home at night and, and you're like, they're gonna reject this. They're gonna reject this, and then it gets printed, and you're like, <laughs> I'm like, tell, tell, tell me your feeling at the point. 
That was, that was it. Exactly. You just did it. That was pretty much it. That was exactly it. You sucked my story dry, dude. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's like, uh, like, let, me just, let me just retell what you just told. Well, I like, go home and I read it. Oh, my God. I hope I don't find this out. Oh, my God. I made it suck. Like, <laughs> like, that's how I. I'm drunk with power. <laughs> okay, let me. Okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna back completely out of arcade games for a second. Uh, okay. yeah, yeah. Um. Now, uh, a lot of people don't know this about me, but I'm an artist, and I I I do sketches. I've got drawings in my house that I made over the last twenty oh, cool. years, and um, and I'm a design artist as well, which is why Arcade Radio even exists, is because I had an, an idea for a logo that I thought was fun. And I, I thought we could do a show where we could have guests uh, that were interesting. And so that's why you're here. But my point, my point is, is that uh, as an artist, um, I'm very fascinated by what, uh, what, like when you were in high school or even junior high, or even like in grade school, um, what drew you to art? And uh, what were some of the things, you know, b- before you did arcade art, what were some of the things that you were like, this is this is what I want to do? Okay, all right. Um, well, first of all, I grew up in a microscopic town. <laughs> of, uh, eight, oh, 850 population. Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah, yeah, with 200 kids in my high school, 43 in my graduating class. Wow. So, yeah, and, and here's, the, here's the irony of it. Uh, we were the Grant Park. Are you ready for this? Dragons. Our, our mascot was, <laughs> That's was cool. a dragon. That's cool. Oh, oh I'm telling you. They're... Mortal Kombat! I, 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 I could do a whole show on just how dragons have popped up in my my life through, for, for oh, years and years. Weird stuff. Yeah, you know, like, like uh, okay, um, I was assigned my, my uh, room in college and my dorm, and I Wrote up the elevator, the doors open up on the fourth floor, and what sure. was there a huge painting of? Chinese <laughs> dragon. That is yeah, amazing. Right. Yeah, dragons kept following. Um, I adopted my, my my youngest son from Kazakhstan, and uh, his name there was Rustam, and everybody kept saying, oh, that's wrong, it's Lus- Ruslam. Well, it's like a years later, years later, I'm doing research for uh, a game, and I'm doing some dragon lore, and I find this old Uzbekistan... Uh, uh, myth <laughs> about about uh, Rustam, like my son's name, Rustam the Dragon Slayer. It's a story about four generations of dragon slayers, that, you know. The, and I'm, I'm like, re- I'm going, you gotta be kidding me! This is freaking me out, you know. <laughs> yeah, dragons are just keep showing up in my life. Well, for, 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 okay, so now grow, growing up on, on a dairy farm, I grew up on a tiny little dairy farm, a lot of work, you know, and. Uh, so my, my parents, uh, my mom was very talented. She could draw. My, my dad uh, w- wanted to be an engineer, and he ended up on a farm, and it was kind of disappointing for him. But when they saw the talent in me, they, they got behind it. Yeah. They really did. I, I, I got to – everything and anything I become, I, I owe to my loving, wonderful parents. I, I had the most wonderful upbringing. It, it, I, I had a Timmy and Lassie – you know, childhood. I really did. Just growing up on the farm and real clean and wholesome. And uh, we even had a collie. You know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, we were herding the cows, milking the cows, and feeding the chickens. And you know, I, I was farm boy. I'm a farm boy, down, down to the bone. So, um, uh, my my initial things was always were dra- drawing what was around me, and that was nature. And I was, uh, and I'm still a, a big nature artist. I I, I actually worked for the Department of Natural Resources for a number of years doing, and Morton Arboretum here, here in Chicago, and uh, Brookfield Zoo, too, doing a lot of Very cool. Uh, nature art. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's a passion of mine is nature art. You know, so uh, yeah, that going on, and um, then I discovered Mad Magazine oh. as a child. Okay, this, yeah, is, this is interesting to me because I think Brian F. Cullen also had some uh, inspirations yes. from Mad Magazine artists. Yeah, like Jack Davis and yeah. uh, uh, Kurtzman and, uh, oh, yeah, some of the other guys. Like, you know, 
Oh yeah, I I I just just you know digested Mad Magazine. I, That's I cool. That was the coolest thing in the world. Very cool. You know? Very cool. Yeah, and then, and then uh, a lot of other stuff like like uh, horror stuff. Um, and and uh, I, I don't know if fans don't know or not, but I, I actually owned a haunted attraction called Abyss Haunted House. I had for about ten years here in Chicago. It was really it was a big show. It was like maybe 60, 70 cast members. So, so but for about ten years. Very uh, cool. So I, I was back in the day. I used to love uh, all those old horror rags like uh, Eerie and uh, <laughs> Remember those? Oh my God, I love that stuff. Yes. Um, yeah, so so uh, my my drawing style is very. I mean, even now, uh, you still see Jack Davis come up on my cartoon characters. You know, he's it, it, definitely a huge influence. Sure. So, um, that, that is a that's yeah, that's uh, really cool. I got the college. Yeah, I got the college. Somebody slipped me a heavy metal magazine under uh, during an incredibly boring lecture. Oh. And it blew my mind, and uh, that changed everything too. Uh, so, uh, so that was about like seventy-seven. Can I can I ask you a question? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. The uh, film. Did you ever see the film Heavy Metal? Oh God, yeah, a thousand times. And, uh, <laughs> it, it. It's so. Uh, let me just put this delicately. It's very pulp, and it, it's so yep. d- different than anything out there. Uh I think Bakshi and a bunch of other artists were very inspired by that film. Uh, if, you know, not had working on the film as well. But oh, still, yes. yeah. it's Pretty such dumb. a fascinating, to me, it's like, you look at modern, like Pixar. Look at Pixar and look at like modern computer art and uh, computer gaming art and all the stuff that goes into that today. And Mortal Kombat was like cutting edge as far as like, rotoscoping humans into a game right um but uh that had all been done before with with movies like lord of the rings and uh you yeah, know actually is lord of the rings they did a lot of rotoscoping through the or falls yeah the orcs and- yeah yeah and <clears throat> I, and and i think peter jackson borrowed heavily it's, from that um but like uh you know, heavy metal was like a thing. That was like so, and and like Harold Ramis was involved from from Ghostbusters. Oh. Like seriously, if you guys have like if listeners have not watched heavy metal, it, it it's a hard watch today because it's not yeah it's not polished. Um, but it, it is. I was gonna say it's not slick. It's it's not you know it's all hand done animation. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. There's no nothing. But it's fascinating, so, yeah, yeah. and it and it's inspirational. Yeah. So I, I'm glad to hear that that's part of your your lore. So well, when huge, huge. Uh, <laughs> so I'm like, gonna... what was your okay? So like, let's riff on that a little bit. So what was your first success? What would you say your first success was? But game wise, in, in 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 the art world in general, does it have to be a game? It, doesn't have to be arcade whatever what was your first success hmm wow um i sold a bunch of paintings when i was in college to some collector who who saw a a random show i had done and commissioned a bunch of paints i ended up paying my entire tuition for a year wow i mean like the tuition my rent and all my books for Mm. yeah yeah, I, I believe me, I could not believe what happened. I, I thought, what? That's and crazy. He was just in love with my stuff. I was, I was like twenty, <laughs> I was like twenty years old. How the hell? I, I, you know, I couldn't believe. It. And you're, you're I, mean, bra- I was, I didn't have a style. I mean, I, I didn't. Maybe I did. I didn't even know it. I didn't, it was, yeah. But whatever he saw in those paintings. He just loved the crap out of it and, and asked me to do a bunch more, and I did, and he thought that was just the greatest thing ever. And I remember when I delivered it, I had another painting sitting in, in, in the van, and, and he, he bought it for another, like, 300 bucks. And this is, like, 1976. Wow. Money. So, you know, like, you know. Wow. So, you know, 
throw on, throw on uh, you know, 250 bucks at a, at a painting this this big in 1976 and a 20 year old shit. <laughs> well, yeah, baby. Yeah. So that, that was my first. And that, that's when I first realized, wow, this could be a thing. This is really a thing. Now, you know, being a farm boy growing up, you never thought that that was a you know, that was ever going to be a reality. By the way, you know, uh, for for our listeners, $300 in 1976 in 2021 is $1,500. Right. Yeah, that's about right. That's a <laughs> that's a lot of money, you know. Right. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my, my tuition was like a couple of grand or nothing, <laughs> you know, back in the day, you know. That's before crazy. 1980 and I'm not going to get political <laughs> so you get I, 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 I slid under the line let's just say I slid <laughs> under the line what the hell okay so you get you get hired by what happened in 1980 let's just see who was in charge then you figure it out for yourself <laughs> I love it I love it so you get hired by uh, Bally Midway yeah yeah in 1982 and uh, so that whole thing goes sideways, too, because uh, in the meantime, a bunch of people from Atari leave and they come over yeah. to uh, Nolan Bushnell and he says, I have this new company called Sente and uh, I- I'm going to start up my own video game company because my contract's up and I don't have to worry about non-compete anymore. And so now I'm going to do uh, Sente. And so you guys come over and work for me. And they're like, OK. And then Bally's like, let's buy you. So now Bally buys Bally. Uh, so then now there's Bally Sente. There was already Bally yeah. Midway. Right? Uh, and you're there during that time period. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they were, they were on a buying spree. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but, all right. When I first started working there, they were in an old uh, factory it was built maybe in like the early fifties, you know, like that old uh, cream colored brick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. My, my first, <laughs> when I first started there, they had Larry Daybeck and I in that huge room where they had all the little testers, you know, like all the little things that pull a trigger a million times to see if it's going to, Oh my God, what a din. <laughs> I, I thought, I, I thought, what, what, what fresh hell be this? Are you kidding me? <laughs> really, when they brought us in there and they said, okay, this little space over in the corner here is where we go. We're going, in, in here, in this in this cacophony? That you you got to be effing kidding me. No, well, they were. They were it, 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 oh, you know, Larry and I just looked at each other like, are you, oh my God, really? <laughs> so we, we ended up bringing a, a, a st- oh, I had my stereo, I had a big old stereo, I just brought it in and all. Remember, it's like the eighties, you know. There was no nothing yet. For sure, for <laughs> sure. No pocket, you know? Yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, no disc man or anything like that. No, so, no. so I brought in, I brought in my whole stereo head and uh, you know, had earphones on, just just so I could just concentrate and work. It was it was terrible. So in the meantime, they were building this huge new building, uh, all black glass and you know white, you know cool. Brushed a little on, and uh, um, uh, we we nicknamed it the house that Pack built. Oh, you know, yeah, kind of like the house that Jack built, but the house that Pack built, um, because you know they're flush with Pac Man. Okay, there, there, there's a little inside joke on that too. In that, um, when they made all that money off of Pac Man, all, all that Pac Man money, man, they were just uh, flush with with cash, and they had it in their heads that um, a successful game had to come from Japan because Pac-Man, right? There you go. So let's go off to Japan and buy a whole bunch of games. <clears throat> so they did. And they got a whole bunch of clunkers, some real stinkers. Uh, in fact, they got, oh, they got jammed on a couple of them where they would bring it back, and I don't know how they didn't miss this in the first place, but there was only like six racks. <laughs> You're playing it, and like, where's the rest of the game? Yep, that was it. How much did you pay for that? Oh, you don't want to know. Oh, no, no. <laughs> was, it, was it six digits? No. Oh, it was seven? No. No, no. Yeah. 
Oh, big money, big freaking money on stupid shit. Oh, my God. And, and how I know this? Because I was the one that did all of the comps for, for games to go out testing, for testing. I, I was super fast with markers. That, that was my forte. And I, I decided to cut out a little niche for myself. That was my niche, was, was I was going to be the fast, fast marker guy. <laughs> and I, boy, was I ever. You know, so uh, whenever they had a, uh, a new game that would come in and they needed uh, you know, to, you know some, something thrown together, throw it together, you know? Oh, there were plenty of times that a machine would be out on the loading dock and we would take our little tool. Everybody at Valley was, was issued a little little tool, and, and it was like like had like like four little things, that, and it had every you know screwdriver or what or, or you know whatever you needed to take apart a a, a video game. <laughs> you could hold it in your hand, and everybody was issued one. So I'd go out there and I'd take that header off, and uh, and I'd put the I think I've even got some. Hold on. No, oh, this is gonna be good. Uh, let's all get our tool sets out right now. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Games you've never heard of because they never got made. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, yeah. I don't know. Now, here's the thing. It was just like, um, they, they, they'd come in, they'd take me in a room, they'd show me the game, and I, I, I'd play it for like, you know, maybe 30 seconds, maybe a minute, just to get a feel for it. I'd go back to my desk, and I'd throw this together in like two hours. You know, it was just super fast. And, and then run out there with the, with the paper. Here, you, you see, we just, we just pasted on, you know, a little, little uh, uh, you know, copyright thing. That's uh, really <laughs> cool. And, and yeah. it's also sick. And, I love it. I love it. So, I don't know, like, like this good. Fighting Roll, another game that never got made. Uh, poor, poor choice on my part with the, 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 the copy and the type, you know. But, oh well, <laughs> it didn't matter. You know, it was just going Dude, we, we need to make these games. I know. I'm out of it, you know? <laughs> It'd be freaking awesome. <laughs> Brian, Brian, Brian yeah, right, game, right, right here, that guy, he could do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See? <laughs> so That's really, like, oh, anyway, very cool. Man. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Paul. What I think was, was doing cop games like that. So whenever they came in, I, I, so, I, 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 I remember that the whole, my whole point of doing that was to kind of niche out for myself. So I, I, I always had, I had job security, you know. All right. So, <laughs> Paul, I have a serious question for you. Yeah. Uh, I'd like you to make a poster of me so I can hang it behind me during the cool. show. <laughs> cool. Are oh, you like, you're like this one back here? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a, that's, that's a good poster, but like, I want, I want Paul, I want Paul E. Niemeyer to draw me. I want you to draw him. You should draw me and then I'll hang it behind me. And then we'll have another show where you're like, I drew that guy. I can do that, yeah. Oh, oh, I've got a whole, I've got a whole cartoon style. Oh, it's, it's a Jack Davis cartoon style. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I've done just about everything twice. I really have. Now, I, I have a, a, a listener that I uh, has been begging me to ask, or not ask you. He, he wants me to tell you about some oh. of the artwork that he's been working on. Um, okay. And uh, his name is Voices FYC 2021. He's in the he's in the chat. Anyway, uh, he has been working on Tron uh, artwork and doing a phenomenal job of like upgrading the gradients and all those sort of things that you worked on back in the day. Uh, and he's super proud of it. I think it's fantastic artwork. But can you tell us a little bit about uh, when you were working on Tron and Satan's Hollow and how that came about? Oh, yeah, yeah, because those games are, are most definitely cousins. Yeah, yeah, for they, sure. They, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, and that was pretty much uh, due to George Gomez. Uh, uh, George was behind, uh, uh, yeah, he, he was really behind all, all of the... Uh, 
uh, the fun stuff on, on Tron and uh, Discotron. We, we, did, we made that a great uh, environmental cabinet that I always smacked my head on getting in and out of because it was not made for people 6'4". <laughs> but well, it was just such a great... You know, and then, and eventually we ended up putting a rubber you know, bezel <laughs> on the damn thing because we kept hitting our heads getting in and out of it. You know? But um, yeah, uh, he had that, that great black light uh, bezel in front of the the, the, uh, the F F fourteen uh, uh, joystick that that he had incorporated. Oh, it was it was a beautiful thing. I I remember he had to jump through a zillion hoops to be able to use the the F fourteen um, uh, joystick. Uh, the, the for whatever reason the military was like, no, I don't think so. Yeah. And that thing yeah. that thing had already been used on Gorf, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, that that was, that was the backstory on it. Yeah, it wasn't like 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 it was already a, a, a thing by the time Tron came along. But but I remember they they had talked about how much trouble they had gone through to try to get, you know, that happening. So they kind of informed us as we were going along. Now one of the funny things was Tron was um, <clears throat> when Doug Watson and I were were told we were going to work on it. They said, well, we've got some people from Disney coming. They're going to show them show you the movie. We're like, holy shit, we're going to get to see the movie? Holy crap. Well, that's freaking awesome. Yeah, I know. I know, I know. So we're like, we're, you know, we're like, we're like kind of like, yeah, we're seeing the movie. Yeah. <laughs> so bad you guys can't see it. Because we're seeing the movie. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So should we make popcorn? Okay, you know. <laughs> well, I, mean, I love it. Hold <laughs> my calls this afternoon. I'm watching the movie. <laughs> All right? I'm going to so watch it on... I'm going to watch it on beta tonight. <laughs> you think I'm joking, but I'm going to do it. No, I don't think you're joking. <laughs> That's why I'm laughing. You're not joking. Uh, yeah, so they brought us into the conference room, and they had a you know, TV set on the stand, or a room boy, you know, they got the tape and put it in, you know, hit and play. And, uh, uh, okay, the, uh, like, like a bunch of random film clips. And uh, no, make, not making sense or anything. Uh, where's the titles or anything? Uh, about thirty seconds goes by, and, and you're done. <laughs> Wait, what? What? That, what? Get out of here! Don't tell anybody what you saw. I couldn't if I wanted to. <laughs> you didn't tell me that was it. That's it. What we? That was it. Can we one, one more time, maybe? No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, you know, so we're, so we're, we're walking back with our tail between our legs. We're going back to the art department, you know, about 10 minutes after we left. <laughs> How was that movie? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> now, uh, I, I have a listener in the, I have a listener in the chat. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. His name's Daniel. He would love to send you uh, his updated art, and we could talk about this offline. But oh, that'd be great! Yeah, he's got some great Tron art that he's he's redone the gradients on, and it looks fantastic. Like wow, uh, if you're gonna have like art art for your Tron machine reprinted, this is the guy to talk to. Anyway, Daniel is a great guy. Uh, I'll hook you up. I'll send, I'll have him send you the artwork. I think you'll love it. Awesome. Awesome. I can't wait. That's cool. I, I love seeing, seeing new art and young, young artists. And, uh, uh, that's one of my things. I, I love to try and inspire, uh, young artists. Yeah. And, and I run into them at the show. They, they always come by and they want to show me the stuff. And I, that, that's like, so exciting. It's just so cool to, yeah. you know, to be, to be part of that. You know? It's it's really neat. It's funny because like it, you meet different people who, when people are really passionate about it, when you see younger people getting into it, or people who are aspiring to do something, it's almost it's it's like exciting. And you see some people who get protective about it. It's like, what are you doing? Like, get more people into this. We right. had a couple of young kids come through the booth today, oh. and I'm like, I mean, these are young college kids with a college badge on coming through the booth, and I'm. Like spent more time with them than any operator that. And you should. Like, and no, you should. You gotta come in. This is this is. Yeah. Bless you. 
Yeah, yeah, they're the future. They're, they're, you know, they're, Absolutely. they're cutting their teeth on, us, on our stuff, man. They're looking at what we're doing and cutting their teeth on it. They're, they're the next generation. Let's bring them along right. You know, oh, absolutely. Yep. I, I, I want to try and, and give them as many legs up as possible. I made so many mistakes. It was so costly, so time-consuming. <laughs> so, you know, I don't do that. Don't, you know, I want to tell everybody how, how not to... What not to do? I, I really, it's literally, I, I feel like, like I'm, I'm the prime, I'm the best example ever because I did everything wrong. <laughs> you know? I made a zillion mistakes. You learn, you learn so much okay. from the mistakes. Right? So, right, right. I want, I want to talk about a dark subject on this show. A dark. Su- I'm going to talk about a dark subject. Like, uh, you know, so many of us um, that are uh, fans of. A classic arcades and thanks thanks for everybody for listening into arcade radio tonight i really appreciate it but um what i want to say is um mortal Kombat is a pivot point it's a pivot point in classic arcade gaming and and for me it represents not only like uh you know we're talking about like censorship in games and you know Blood versus not blood, and all that sort of thing. But you, and, and uh, innovation, and, right? And, you know, techniques. But Paul, everything. you're you're in a, a unique situation, uh, having been in at the end of the golden age. You you experienced Pac Man and Pac Man Plus, and blah 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 blah. But Mortal Kombat was a game changer. It was a, and I hate yeah. that. I hate that term. I hate the term game changer because if you don't use it correctly, it means nothing. Right? It's 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 a it's a it's a absolutely. It's an empty phrase. But here's yeah, the thing. Yeah. Mortal Kombat is a fucking game changer. It actually changed the industry. True enough. You know. Yeah, it did. So it, it not it only did it it got Congress involved. It got, I mean, like, and I hate, I hate uh, the, the, the platform that it brought in because I'm not a fan of that, but I still respect it for what it is. It is a fantastic thing for the video game industry. I think one of the most amazing things to ever happen to the video game industry is Mortal Kombat. And not only did it spawn like, video video game uh sequels but movies and movie sequels and all those sort of things and like a oh, freaking oh, amazing oh, techno music like 90s techno music is so awesome like seriously mortal Kombat is like i don't know how to explain it but it basically changed the industry and so for me yeah. um you have an, a unique perspective on like classic and like what I would call the next generation of video game players. What do you feel about no. that? What, how do you feel about that? Well, you know, uh, back when we did it, no one expected any of that to happen. Any of this. No sure. One did. Uh, um, <clears throat> all right. They didn't even think the game was going to be any kind of a success. They were anticipating a flop, mainly for a couple of reasons. One, they only made 300 games. That that was the bare minimum run of any game production. The bare minimum was 300. Seems okay. rather yeah. short-sighted. Yeah. And, and the other reason was they brought me into it. They brought a freelancer in to do the, the final art on it. Why? They did not want to tie up staff artists who were busy with far more important jobs. Whatever those jobs were, I'm sure at the time they thought they were far more important. So we'll just get Paul in here. And uh, Greg Ferris brought me in. And, you know, I worked for him. He was my immediate boss at, uh, when I worked at, at Bally. And uh, I'd done a bunch of freelancing for him uh, after I left Bally in 84. So I'd done a number of games. So, you know, he, he knew uh, he could bring me, bring me in and I could do it in my sleep. No problem. They listen. It'll be done, done and done, you know. And that was their whole attitude about, about Mortal Kombat was, 
yeah, it's, we're, we're doing some crazy crap here, and they're pretty much just letting us do whatever the hell we want to. And that's pretty much what we're doing. And, they, you know, they, they didn't have any expectations. I think that's probably why it was su such a success, is that no one expected anything from them. There, were, there was no <laughs> Really, and you know they thought, oh yeah, what what are those what are those goose doing down there? What's what's that new guy, Tobias? What the hell is he up to? You know, like, I saw some sketches of his. They look pretty interesting. What what they got going on? He was twenty one years old. What the hell? You know, he's fresh out of school. So um, that that's what that's what, what the whole attitude was. Now, the day my first day, my very first meeting was the day that they changed the name to Mortal Kombat. It was Dragon Attack before that. And, and before it was Dragon Attack, yeah, okay, would that have been the same success as Dragon Attack? I don't think so. Probably not. Probably not. No. Uh, and, and, like, yeah, and I, I, I remember, uh, you know, uh, at the end of that meeting, we, I was like an hour and a half or talk, I was writing pages, pages, pages of stuff, you know. Uh, my pen gives out, and, uh, and Boone goes, oh, I almost forgot, we're going to work <laughs> I am literally packing up my stuff and ready to, and, and he's going, Oh, I forgot. Oh, we're, called, we're changing the name to Mortal Kombat. Oh, well, that might have been something. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so I wrote down Mortal Kombat. And he looks over my shoulder and goes, What a K? Well, of course, with a K. What, what, what was I think? I, I don't know who came up with the K. I, I guess maybe. Back in 82, uh, I used to be able to throw. Yeah. <laughs> Ignore that. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good. Um, yeah, so I mean that 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 was how it all happened. Then I heard later that uh, actually John Tobias had had a, another name uh, for it. I don't even know what it was. It was it was a kung fu fighting style that he liked that nobody can remember the name of. And so <laughs> they, they, they shot yeah. <laughs> they, they shot that out of the water right right away. And then then Dragon Tag was, was the second name, and then that had a big <laughs> go on about it, you know. So let me just uh, it's, it's, go ahead. Go ahead. I would, I would, I want to share something with you because, yeah. uh, Mortal Kombat was not just a video game phenomenon. When the, when the film hit, um, it was, it was, nobody had done it up until that. And they totally stole the plot from, you know, Enter the Dragon. So, uh, oh, yeah. No, it's it's not, it's not like anything. And, and, uh, big trouble, in little China. Right. So there, there was nothing yeah. new. Nothing new was being done. But, but here was the energy behind the film. We we get into the movie theater. It's late at night, and there's a bunch of us, twenty somethings in there. You know, um, maybe maybe we're just on our thirties at the time, but. Um, there was a guy that sat probably two rows from the, the front. And I remember thinking this, this movie, you know, it, like the immortals come on. It's like, dun, 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 dun. And they're like, you know, mortal combat, you know, finish him. And all, all those elements had to be there, right? Like all of the people that were there, that were video game fans were like waiting for those lines to happen. Right. Uh, and so, right. yeah. Yeah. And, and so, but my favorite part of the film has nothing to do with the film. It's because of the audience interaction. And there was a guy probably two rows up from the, the screen. And like when, when the mortal Kombat theme started to play, he goes, He just makes this totally inappropriate noise, and as and everybody starts laughing, and it, and it was like and cheering. We start cheer, cheering for this guy who was like, you know, totally into the film, right? Uh, but like Mortal Kombat, uh, to me has like a special place, uh, in video game history, not because of how good the game was, but because of its. Uh, cultural significance and, and, and so innovative, yeah, unique. Yeah, so so different, right? Yeah. So, so, so do we have do we have a moment until I, I've got a, a little Mortal Kombat story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, of course. Uh, 
Yeah, okay. All right. Um, two days after uh, I had that initial meeting, and, I, and I'm starting the game, and I've got, and I've got all, all over my, my studio, I get a call from Incredible Technologies. And <laughs> I was starting Incredible Technologies. And by the way, those are the people that made uh, Golden Tea and Super yes. Strike Bowling and Capcom Bowling. Yeah. Uh, yeah, good, good. Thank you for, for giving them some, uh, the credits. You know, so, you know, well, the funny thing is back then, uh, and by the way, they were all the old programmers from Valley. That's how I knew them. Those guys. You know, so they called, yeah, so they called me up and they said, come on down here. We got we a super secret project we're working on. I said, okay, great. Uh, so I get down there and they tell me all about this game they're putting together to go up against a game that's being developed over at Midway called Dragon Attack. Have you heard of it? Oh, yeah. No, do tell. <laughs> and I'm like, uh oh, here we go, you know. <laughs> yeah. So they were, the, the game was Time Killers. And, oh, cool. And, they, and it, was, it was literally designed to be the competition of Mortal Kombat. So now I've got both games in my studio, one on one t drawing board and one on the other, really seriously violating both NDAs in a huge <laughs> way. <laughs> Thinking, but, you know, okay, now, now here's the thing. It wasn't intentional because, you know, I, <laughs> I, I get a call from Intercontinental Technology. I go get another, another game project. I go to get another game project. I've got an NDA with everybody. I'm not saying anything little did i know they were they were giving me the project that was the direct competition of the other project <laughs> you know so it wasn't like they did it intentionally and and then and, you know, and i'm kind of thinking along the way too now if i open my big mouth about it it's gonna it'll sink both of them and me and end up in a lawsuit so i just better shut the hell up and after i talked to my lawyer he said oh god yeah i can't say anything we, we went to lunch and he said oh my god i think the waitress heard you know, you know, he was literally, he was got to be, so I literally kept that secret for 17 years. I never spoke of it to anyone that I worked on both games simultaneously, but I had a front row seat for both of them. And it was interesting that, uh, the production, uh, uh approach was like m the mere image of each other, uh, for, for Time Killers, I was doing the actual artwork that was the backgrounds of the game itself. And we did it kind of like like uh, like animation, where the background was com almost completely still, and then the, there's a, a middle ground and a forward middle ground and a foreground. And they, and they moved back and forth as the characters, you know, moved, moved back and forth and fought. And, and uh, you know, they had had a real rudimentary... Uh, um, program that that just that changed pixelation so that, that the, the, uh, <laughs> the yeah yeah you know, it was real real simple but at the time I was like God damn that's cool that's cool <laughs> that's amazing you know holy shit oh my God cool that's the coolest damn thing you know, yeah yeah at the time you know okay so now here's the thing that their approach was was 180 degrees from from Mortal Kombat Mortal Kombat they're creating all the backgrounds electronically and we're were photo capturing the the fighters, you know, the, and, and time killers. It was the opposite. We're, we're we're hand painting all of the backgrounds and scanning them, and they're creating the the, the combatants electronically to be over the front of it, and and the simultaneously happening. And I got a front row seat for both. It was pretty crazy. It was kind of fun, you know. And I couldn't tell anybody, you know. And I, and I couldn't tell anybody for 17 years. So I couldn't tell anybody. So there you go. That that's that's oh, that's funny. That's, that's funny. That, that's great. Like I mean, getting into that position where you've got two opposing companies. One, it's like small world, and two. You you are really stuck. I mean, what do you do? It's like uh... yeah, <laughs> like I'm, I was in it. Yeah, so so really after the after the first meeting, I'm already in it. I, I've maybe by taking the meeting, I violated the NDA. So you know, that's why that's my lawyer said, "Dude, <laughs> go with it and hope hope nobody figures it out." And, oh oh <laughs> oh, here's the thing in, about midstream. Here's what happened too uh, about midstream. Um, that the, they're they're pushing. Uh, Midway's really pushing. Oh, cranking up, cranking up, you know. Uh, I, I'm working like day and night just about. 
somehow uh, incredible technologies calls me up and they're going, I don't know what's going on over there, but our inside guy, and I'm going, oh shit, they've got an inside guy? <laughs> oh, uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh, does the inside guy know that I'm the guy that's... The... <laughs> now, look, I'm a freelancer. Yeah, so I'm not in the office. I'm just, you know, I come in, I'm in a meeting, and I go. So I'm not hanging around, thank God. So I'm thinking, is there an inside guy going to tell them that I'm working on the... Uh, it never happened, but, you know, I went to a cold sweat when somebody, when they told me that. I, I, oh, yeah, what did he say? <laughs> you know? mm. So what he did say was, man, they're really cranking out the production here. we got to pump it up. So... They're, they're like, okay, we got to pump up our production because they're pumping up their production. And I'm on the phone thinking, they're pumping up. I'm the one that's pumping up. It's me. It's me that's doing it. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm my own worst enemy here. Unbelievable. I'm, work, I'm working so just, diligently. Uh, and yeah, so now, now, now I get the... So it got so crazy, it became a, like a, It was an experiment in sleep deprivation, okay? Uh, so... so I, I call I called my buddy Rich Lowe, another illustrator, and he ended up doing four of the backgrounds for uh, for Time Killers, which is probably nobody else nobody knows that either, okay? Because that, that was part of the secret. <laughs> I love it. So there you go. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It, so you just tell them like, no, no, no. I trust me. They're not gonna hit that deadline. <laughs> <laughs> I need to sleep tonight. They're gonna miss it. We're good. I just, uh, I, I just have this feeling. All right. So, so, so to 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 finalize tonight's interview, I want I want to okay. say, uh, thanks, Paul, for being on the show. And by the way, uh, both you and Brian are gonna be at the same event. So that has I, I, you guys have to marry up. I don't know how that has. Yeah. Well, I'm, oh, I'm definitely gonna find. I'm definitely gonna find Paul. And I, you know, Paul. I mean, looking at the list of games you did, I got to say, like, Tapper, Tron, Satan Solo, Spy Hunter, Wacko. I mean, I have all of those. Super Pac-Man, Pac Plus. It's, oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, oh. I, it's, and I, I and was I in the right enough. place at the right time. You know, I, I, I really got to say, I got lucky. I really did get lucky. I, I, did, I didn't pick those games. I, you know, they said, you, come here, Satan Solo. Okay. <laughs> I do have I do have one question for you though. Yeah. Did you ever get to see Brian Colon driving with the dryer tube on his face? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Oh, no. But, 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 but I, I got I I got other Brian Colon. So, oh, okay. okay, we need some dirt. Okay. We need some dirt. Okay, I'm dishing dirt. I got your dirt for you, right? Okay. He, he had an old army cop, okay, that he brought into the office, and he had it shoved under under the, the, the desk in his, in his cubicle. And he pulled that damn thing out, and, and you know, and literally, like like, 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 it's like a mash, you know. You know or, and he didn't take power naps in the afternoon. And he had a bathrobe. When he had a bathrobe, he wears a bathrobe around. Like, what the fuck? Well, we got to have... Oh, we got to have... Okay, so we should have Brian and you on the show. Now, I know you didn't work together. You're on different floors and whatnot. But yeah, Br- yeah. We, we Brian's... We more now than we did that. We're, we're great friends now. Yeah. <laughs> Brian, yeah. Brian's been on the show. You've been on the show. I think, like, like the end of season six, we should have, like, the Brian uh, and Paul show. It'll be, it'll be oh. totally awesome. That would be I, awesome. I got. Should send you Paul. I've got a great picture. I remade the Spy Hunter cockpit seat, and I was at Free Play Florida four years ago, I think it was. And I have a great picture of Brian Colon sitting on it, on a chair, playing the stand up Spy Hunter. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. That's awesome. I love it. It's so funny how how our our careers. You know, a parallel and touch it like, like we worked on the same games, but you know, hardly hardly any kind of interaction. It was more like you know, like you pass them in the hallway. Yeah, hey, how's it going? And that's that's about it. That's that's the most interaction we had while we were working together. Like like now we're we're, we're buds. I see him, but you know, I, I talk to him all the time. Now we never talk then. <laughs> oh, for sure. So, yeah. I love it. I love it. Funny. All right. I'm, so I'm... the chatters are actually saying we should have you back on with. Brian, I think that'll be fantastic. 
fantastic. And and I'm going to make sure Brian doesn't fall asleep when he calls into the show again. Uh, so I, I think it'd be great. <laughs> But he's, he's oh, an okay. awesome guy. We, we, have a, we have a great dynamic when we're together. <laughs> we're really, really All right, we Paul, Paul, we'd like you to stick with us after the outro. Uh, we'd like to formally say goodbye to you for tonight. Good night to you for tonight. So hang on a little bit longer as we, you know, uh, try to, try to, I don't know, whatever we do on the, the out of the, the outro of the show. Right, Brian? Right, Brian? <laughs> I, I gotta I gotta find a page here, man. I mean it's like I, I, got, I like this laptop this, is crazy. Yeah, and, we're good, we're good. And like Mark has totally he's so one of us is gonna have to do that, right? So uh I'm gonna play a song. I don't know what's what song it's gonna be, but it'll be something uh outro ish. Okay, here we go. Okay, thanks for listening. All right, guys, thanks for listening, and this has been the double r's that's arcade radio uh we appreciate you tuning in check out our website arcade radio that's r-c-a-d-e-r-a-d-i-o.com for all of our social media and swag links <laughs> call leave comments just like bobby z at this at 612-548 game g-a-m-e oh that's 4263 you know you know whatever <laughs> Enjoying the show. Arcade Radio is live over at teespring.com. Arcade Radio. Or consider supporting our Patreon campaign uh, over at Arcade Radio for Patreon. There are multiple tiers starting at just $3 a month. Any bit helps us with the cost of running the show. And, and I'm going to be Brian. <laughs> Subscribe to our church. We have a tw- by the way, we have a Twitch channel and some other stuff. Anyway, check out the Twitch channel. Uh, go ahead, Mark. <laughs> All right. If you like what you're hearing, consider dropping us a five-star review. No fours, no threes, no twos, all fives. That's right. Over at Anchor, iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you consume the spot podcast. That's right. So that's going to be it for tonight's uh, madness, you know. What the hell is this? <laughs> Yeah, and if you if you just yeah uh, wait, what? let's see if we can try this out. <laughs> We're gonna get in trouble for that, but I don't care. So <laughs> probably a copyright infringement. <laughs> Everything is. So. We hope you had a blast, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Take care and have a good night, guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, stick with us uh, stick with us Paul we'll be back with you in just a second All right, here we go oh, wait wait there should be some loud techno music happening right now wait and then here we go no 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 wait and then here we go no. uh, and wait and here we go uh, wait and here we go oh that's just uh